Okay. All right, everyone, welcome to the December 14th, 2022 meeting of the Historic District Commission. Uh, before we start, I'd like to read the board's actions in these matters have been deemed by quasi judicial in nature. If any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest, that issue should be raised at this point, or it will be deemed waived. Uh, introductions uh, to my right is Joanna Landis, the alternate, and then we have Dr. Dan Brown. I always forget to say that. Retired. And Martin Ryan. Merry Christmas. Reagan Moody. No. My name is John Wyckoff. Nick Cracknell, the assistant planner. Good evening. A rich play is, uh, is that a city council, city council meeting? City council meeting, of course, in the band. Uh, Margo Doring, <laughs> David Adams, Good evening. and Karen Dufar. Good evening. So um, we're going to get going on our administrative approvals. And um, uh, one, two, and three are... Continued. Continued till next month. month. Okay. So if anybody would like to. Those applicants are still working. I'm do we continue on two and three till next meeting? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to do number nine, one Walton Alley first, um, because Mr. Adams has to recuse himself from this. So, uh, Nick, if you could scoot ahead yep. a bit. I don't know if anybody's here to speak to one Walton Alley. Yep, yeah, maybe you could come up while I just introduce it. Uh, this project was recently approved by the HTC. I believe the applicant's requesting four or five changes related to the rear addition that was approved. There's a slight relocation of the addition on the back. Uh, the standings, I think. You know, yeah, oh, yeah. Here's good. Here's good. Um, uh, so the rear addition, I think, is is shifted a few inches inboard of the uh, the side wall of the of the historic structure. A door, I think, is being replaced with a window in that addition. The entryway is being adjusted, and um, uh, there's an attic window. I think that is going to be potentially replaced with a green mountain. You can window. have the candy. All right. Thank you. Did you catch that, Mark? Huh? So maybe I went yeah. over the attic window, but yep. I think maybe everything else relates to the addition. Yes. Shifting and the size and uh, the door to a window. Yep. So I don't know if you want me to go over any of that or if anyone has any questions. Yeah. Any questions? <clears throat> yeah. Any questions? So we're going to vote on this separately. Someone would like to make a motion. I move that we accept this proposal. Please. And changes is written. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you. Yeah. Yeah. and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, was there another item somebody wanted to pull out? Do we have to do it? That they might. No. No. I don't think so. I not so. Okay. All right. So hopping up to forty-seven hour. This was on last week's agenda. There's some questions here about the. The, uh, the conduit on the back and how well or not well it was illustrated in the application, only more the latter, uh, and whether any screening was proposed. So that was conveyed to the applicant, and I believe that they were going to phone in. So if you could raise your hand, whoever you are, there's a lot of people in the, uh, the attendees box. There we go. All right. Looks like Justin. Justin, I think you can speak. Yes. Perfect. I'm here. All right. Did you hear me introduce that? Yes. Can you I did. speak to the issue of the everybody move your bonus? Uh, can you speak to the issue of the, the lack of a screen in your proposal for that uh, condenser in the rear yard and perhaps clarify what your intentions are with the exterior conduit? Because it wasn't particularly clear in your application. <laughs> where it was going to be, what color it was going to be, and whether you had thought of things like an interior location or moving it over to a vertical element at a minimum on the outside. Understood. Yeah, so the, the question I received was specifically on the condenser and the screening of the condenser, which my response was our backyard is fenced in and screened with our fencing. 
as far as the conduit goes, we are going to have a white uh, cap that goes that covers the conduits that travel from the condenser up the back of the home to the two locations on the rear of the house, uh, which will be the only uh, exposed, or I guess, exterior conduit runs will be on the back of the home. Um, all the other units will be served through conduits within the house. All the other units uh, in your, is this a single family house? Yes, so when, I, when I'm saying units, interior, interior, um units yeah. is serving one condenser <clears throat> interior heating and cooling units yeah one condenser serving all your hoods but you, you yes. have you have two lines going off of that condenser one into the first floor on the rear and then one on the second floor on the side right following your, uh, both, your white line yeah yeah both is the rear of the house uh, under well you, you actually show it Oh, I see. That is that's that's the, that the same spot. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay. funny. Got it. Yeah. So the uh, the lines, the line sets in their white covers are going to be painted the clapboard color. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? How far? Yeah. How far the vent is the uh, property fence from the? Condenser. Uh, eight feet from the from the edge of the condenser to the fencing is eight feet. So, Justin, I'm sure you know by now you you probably need a variance to put it in that location. It's supposed yep, to be a ten foot setback. Yep, narrative has been submitted okay. um, to the BOA. Okay. I will, but you know, he's doing it. Yeah. If, well, if he doesn't get it, then he's not doing it. He doesn't yeah. get it. Yeah. So I also will note that I was informed by East Coast HVAC that permit has been issued by the city on this today, uh, which I found was interesting. Yeah. Um, I will let them know that I'm still going through the BOA and HTC on this. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to make sure I'll check noted. tomorrow with inspections to make sure they remedy that all right so he is proposing to paint the conduit the color of the house they're both i guess white even though there's a big difference there okay okay well, what do we want to do regarding the screen and the conduit it's to be painted the green painted the color of the, the house oh, it's green. yeah there'll be It'll be a PVC cap, almost. I, I that goes the over the conduit. White? Yeah. Gray. Is the house white or gray? How about, well, I guess it doesn't matter what color the house is. What we would want to see is that that conduit be painted the color of the house. Whatever. Yeah, the conduit. Color. The conduit will be encased in a in a cap, essentially. No, that yeah. is that's yeah. going to be the color of the house. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Normally, you have to paint that cap because the house is rarely the color of the the cap that you buy, right? Right. Right. Making sure he knows that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, are we good with Justin? Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> okay. I, I guess we're good, Justin. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, next was Seven Hancock. Now, this was our gold standard last week with the screen. And um, what the HVAC contractor is seeking tonight is approval for a plan B. They plan to put this conduit from, this con from the condenser into an existing chimney that's been blocked off inside the house. They don't yet know the condition of that chimney until they open it up. Uh, so they need a plan B if they're going to mobilize the government site. The plan B is to, to have the conduit placed as shown on the page that's been included here, go up along the downspout and paint it the color of the house. That's not their preference. That's not what they're trying to do, but they don't want to mobilize, show up at the house and find out they can't use the chimney and then have to send everything again. 
They're going to go inside the chimney. Yes. Okay. I think there's a chimney that is unused in that structure, as I understand it. That it's not clear. What a raccoon looks like them. inside. That's their preference. Maybe we could stipulate just so it's obvious it's your preference as a commission that that chimney be used. So the path of least resistance, which this may represent, isn't suddenly the, the winning strategy. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, give me a chance to write something down. I think every the last application with the site now. I think every one of these should have a title. Right. We agree, and that's why the first three aren't coming. Uh, they didn't even have a map. Uh, okay. Uh, 40, is it 40 Pleasant? We discussed this very, very briefly at the last meeting just regarding the uh, the notion of doing a site walk for the lighting yet come on up. So the applicant seeking approval for the previously submitted design for the lights, the accent lighting on the building, they weren't able to do a full mock-up as I told you last week. So they've uh, included some uh, renderings in here, illustrating how the lighting will be uh, shown on that building. And I've also indicated that they have the ability to uh, modify the uh, intensity of the lighting to right. Right. right? Yes. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, Robert Wedemeyer with uh, Winter Holbin, the architect on that. Uh, if anybody's interested, did bring the one foot version, We're proposing the two foot version, but this is the one foot version of what the light picture actually is. <clears throat> Very basic question. Absolutely. Why do you feel this building needs lighting? It's uh, what the client and the owner requested. So he did not convey to you a, a reason. I mean, yes. Yeah, well, it's a very prominent building, and you know? I actually drove by it on the way here. It's kind of you know it's dark and on the script right now. So I think it's just a way to uh, give it a little bit more presence at night. Is there a battery attached to that? Or that's nothing There's a remote power supply oh. that is in another box that I didn't bring. It's okay, kind of. And they're all controlled by a remote control? There's multiple ways to go about it. You can like preset it if you want, but then they actually have a web app that you can do it. They actually have a voice control option. So there's all sorts of well, ways want to, that to get out of it. Yeah, we don't want that. Point. Yeah, well, it could be fun. Yeah. Does this change colors? Just a way. Yeah, this 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 picture here is a uh, RGBW, so red, green, blue, white. Um, the whites are, I think, from twenty five hundred to five thousand. It's on the cut sheet here with the range that you can program it for. Um, the four thousand twenty two to four thousand. It says so. I think. When we did the bottom up, I think that was 2700. I think 2700 okay. is pretty common. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely want a, a yeah. you know, standard, typical, sort of warmer, softer uh, light on it. <clears throat> Any other questions that we have? Is this a uh, hardwired combo? Good. Yeah. You're saying there's a, a power source there. Yeah. Well, there's a, so it's a, so it's LED, so it's low voltage. So okay. you're hardwiring to the power supply, and then the power supply basically can daisy chain, I think, up to 10 or something of these. So it'll just be like a low voltage, uh, like a fire alarm. Yeah. Cable. Are you securing it so, to the building? Um, so this is like the mounting bracket the, here. Well, the, the cable so, that's going to daisy chain the ball. Um, I mean, some of that's going to have to be a discussion with the electrician to see where we can get it. Uh, more than likely, are you drilling into the building, or you, how is it secured? Well, we got to get outside somehow. So, I mean, more than likely, what will happen is at least you know, the upper ones are going to be easy because we can just get up into the attic and get out and stop it, and basically just penetrate at the point of these fixtures. The, uh, 
Yes, office facade there. <laughs> um, What's we, the we stuff that you're in that building? It's, uh, so I believe stone. it's stone still yeah. out there at that point. Um, so the bigger challenge would be just at the, the shelf, the lower area with the uplight. And again, you know, it's going to be one of these where we find a logical location within the building, go through down low at that point. I mean, the, the whole goal was to not expose or, you know, have any of that very visible, you know, keep it just low, tight, direct to where it needs to be. And, and that'll be that. I wonder if the discussion with the electrician you should come back and please discuss it with us or not. I don't think it's a bad idea. And just I mean, if we say that it, all fasteners have to be stainless steel, that's that's a start, right there. Well, we did. And we I did know. say that. Okay. It's in our detail, even. All right, good for you. Oh, you know, you know right. it's baby steps for You're me. You're all right. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna. I'm sorry to roll this back like this, but how many sides of the building are you talking about? All four. All four. <laughs> These are very. So the fixture we're proposing is, it's called a, I mean, there's multiple uh, like light cones that come out of this. We're looking to do just a 10 degree by 30 degree. So this way it's coming out 30 degree, this way it's 10 degree. So it's gonna be kind of a narrow shaft in between the windows to kind of highlight the stone. It's 30 degree just because that's enough to cast everything against the wall, not get out beyond the soffit or anything. Um, we want to do up down just so again. I mean, there's a lot of nice stone detailing in there that we'd like to be able to kind of uh, express, get some nice shadow lines going in there, and you know, make it uh, something, make it interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that the building isn't interesting, but again, you know, at night it's just sort of a dark wall right oh, now. This will be the first of its kind in town, right? Yeah. 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 And I don't really remember having a building. The steeple is lit. And, it's the steeple and the new, in the middle of town. Yeah, and the new building, the brick market has a very, very stark. This, this is pretty dramatic. I mean, again, some of it's going to be. It's a dramatic building. Right. I mean, some of it, again, is that's why we got the fixture that's got all the bells and whistles so we can. Look to dial down and you know tone in. You know, get that light where it wants to actually be. Um, you know, with the adjustability. And again, you know, we didn't want like a big wide flood or anything along that. You know, so we've done we've done a fair amount of research just on you know the picture that we want, the like light we want to cast up against it. Um, you know, and then giving us uh, the ability to to make some adjustments still so that it comes in. Looks yeah. good. No, I, I appreciate that this has so many different controls and you adjust it and make adjustments. Um, I am positive, you know, I feel positive about the idea of lighting up this building. Um, my concern is going to be the holes that, that are being made into the stone. And I, I guess. Part of me would like to see how big these screws are, um, just because you know this is going to do be a permanent. Um, I mean, that'll give you an idea. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of a big screw. Um, yeah. For for an area that, I mean, I'm just looking at um, your details here. The overhang because that, that is uh, absolutely. Yeah. So I don't know. These these are permanent holes being made. In the I stone understand that. So these, um, could be Three five sixteenths, but it uh, it could be a quarter. Also, my my yeah. maybe Mr. Adams could figure out. So it's within the realm of no, it's not three eight. It's within the realm of the plastic um, inserts. You know, it's definitely not a lead type of. Uh, fastener that goes into the granite. It would be no. It would be it would be a fastener that's yeah. going to uh, you know, outside of creating the so the holes just, would be a quarter inch. Yeah, hole. yeah. Um, and how many of those is it? Just one per unit? Or it would be, I believe, two per. Two. So 
It looks like six units on the front and back and four units on the side. Well, yes, well, is there an uplight and a gentleman? Yes, yes, okay, let's double. Yep. Mm -hmm. Could I ask a question? Um, would you just consider uplighting it so that we're not looking at these little black uh, pieces of, of equipment? Um, well, that's one reason I actually brought this fixture. Right? Was if you could just you have a bit of a shelf on the on the bottom portion. We do. And if you just uplit it, I want this building to be lit up. I think it'd be spectacular building to light up. The, I just think that there's a right way to do it that's not detracting from it. The, and I think the two lights are fighting each other when you can just have one and it'd be a little little less intense. And I think uh, I could support that. The, the, the catch with just uplight is at least on the shelf, stone shelf that we're looking to put it, that right above that, there is another piece of stone trim that sticks out a fair amount. Um, and you even see it in sort of the lighting. Where we've kind of got that gap it's at the bottom. Is that the shadow being cast there? So the idea is getting some light from above it. down below to help mitigate that. Um, but then I don't know. Did you see when we had light up on the building a month ago or so? I, I didn't have a chance to see. It. Okay, that was just that was a four foot. So that was twice as long as yeah. what we're going and there, and it was just up light. Yeah, and it just it, I, mean, I don't know the pictures there, but it just it felt like. Yeah, it was lacking in our opinion. So. Just for what it's worth, I was just in Montreal last weekend and there's some fantastic historic granite and limestone buildings in the part of the historic district that are lit. Most of them are only lit from the bottom. Yeah. And they catch the corners. So there is no downlighting. That's a four story building, mm -hmm. taller than this one. Does look like it would work and pick up all that detail in this that you really want to see on this building. Do you know where the picture was on the keyboard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So I went by there. Yes, more than anything. The, the TD Bank building, currently TD Bank, uh, the, the virtual butter to this building on State Street yep. uh, the other night. And they have some very heavy handed down lighting panels. That hang off the side of the building, that I assume are there to illuminate the sidewalks for, I assume, theoretically, bank security, that there would be no loiterers in it. Uh, it it's not like they, they're there to melt the snow off the sidewalk, but there could. There's nothing attractive about them, I have to say, just absolutely nothing. Now, this demonstration, it, it, at least allegedly, is controllable and aimable and the rest of that, but, yeah. but those lights really. Really missed the point as far as I'm concerned. They were down a long time ago. It was a, they had a battle with their son, TV uh -huh. Bank. And um, so they're trying to eliminate that green strip that goes around the building because that was part of their uh, band, you know, product. Just looking at the amount of lighting that's on, you could probably cook, you know, eggs on it for breakfast. That's unfortunate. Mm. You want to see a this from yeah, the flash it this way? Uh, yep. yep. It's only up I mean, yeah. like that. In, it's very subtle. There is a, clearly, as the applicant suggests, there's a band of uh, corners yeah. uh, that is going to. Which as, is here. As, there is one here too. But there's I mean, no light going by. Up like that one. There is some light going by. Well, and the this one's course, on the top of the second floor with two stories above it. Right. So, but if you if you look, I mean, essentially, the, the first, so you can see the fixtures out a little bit from the wall. It's basically the full width of the stone in between the windows there. there. At least that's what it looks like. You yeah. can pull them out a foot or two and, and aim them out. Right. So they're getting out a little bit. Oh, whereas okay. here, we don't want it, especially down low, we don't want to have Let's those checked out. We kind of want those hidden. So we're, we're handicapping ourselves in a way because we're up tight against that wall to begin yeah. with. And then we have things coming out to block it. Um, I, I propose that we start with just the uplighting the lower part. I'm, I'm just concerned about putting too many holes in the building. One that the okay the visibility of the picture is at the top. 
and how you're going to wire them through stone is going to be tricky. So um, I don't know how other people feel about that, but I can I, I could. Um, I think that um, propose that we just start with the book, the low lighting. No, I think that that's working. We're getting um, only a, a lot of positive yeah. shapes here. So. That's going to be a stipulation is that we only do the uplighting from the first floor up for the time being. See how that goes. And then you can come back. You might just be as happy as all get out. Or you might prove us all wrong. Yes. Yeah. We'll see. But so you guys better hope I don't prove you wrong. I can <laughs> I've been proved wrong. So I got three. Three stipulations that you've nibbled on, the big one being only uplighting shall be used yeah. uh, with this approval. Second, the applicant agrees to modify the intensity of the lighting to ensure compliance with the lighting regulations of the city. Uh, that just goes without saying. Right. Uh, number three, the location size, the location and size of the penetration shall be reviewed and approved by the commission administratively prior to install installation, just so you know how big the holes are and where they're going. They can order all the stuff. Yeah, sure. It's it's about doing it right. You've got the right fasteners. It's about knowing how many penetrations you have and where they are. Do we have to stipulate that, or probably the city already covers the fact that the light shouldn't be in motion? Motion. Well, dimming oh, as and a blinking as a fourth item or what? <laughs> if it has to be, I, no, I, I would think we don't want to. Start. Light ordinance won't allow that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I, I didn't understand your question. Kind of. This is more about the dark sky part, or making sure there is an offsite glare to the major cities. Um, so the city has regulation of whether it's too bright or. Yeah, remember okay. we had somebody here living nearby that was concerned yeah. about it. Yeah. All right, that's good. All right. Oh, that's it. I think that's it. That's it for that one. <laughs> oh, is that it for? Yeah, no, we oh, still no. have. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm sorry. You want to keep going? Then? I think we can. Yeah. Did you want to touch on this? You want me just to? I think you should do that next time. Okay, but that's fine. Yeah. It was just a hot button item at the time, and I just thought, hey, I'm going to be here. We can try to get on it. Something great. on the windows, right? That you got approved. Oh, it's something on the yeah. Essentially, with the windows, one of the stipulations was to basically get administrative approval on. Yeah each of the metal bulldoze trims that we wanted to remove. Um, we've been in discussions with the supplier and the installer where we're getting a lot of uh, feedback where there's concern on just um, how, to, how do you know if that trim is gonna survive being removed and installed. If they try to not remove the trim and install from the inside, there's concern that you're not going to get quality insulation, flashy sealant because you can't get from one side. Um, and they don't want to do it from the outside at that point because the window unit's got to shrink for that entire bit. Um, just the logistics of ideally for installation, they like to be able to scaffold around the building. And once we do that, kind of want to just get openings changed out as quickly as possible so we're not causing too much problem for a long period of time and that's kind of tough to do if you're discovering oh well the trim we just took off is now falling yeah. apart we have to order new trim the trim that we're looking to do is special order aluminum extru extrusion to match the aluminum that's for the windows okay. but it also matches the profile of the makes a lot of sense Could we talk about it well, is so everybody there? It's up to so you what, guys. what actually is the request beyond? So the, the request is essentially all new, all new trim outside of the two historic windows that, with the quarter inch, because the trim around the, both of those are still intact. So, you know, those two will leave exactly as is, but the window units that we're actually pulling out, we'd like to be able to pull out the trim, put new trim in. We just think the installation is going to be... Um, you're gonna get better quality out of it. I mean, you're actually gonna get a consistent look. Well, not, you could. It's not I, advertised here. It's not. Well, okay. Yeah, not, if, what are you looking at? In your guys' defense, I threw this at yeah. Nick this yeah. afternoon. Yeah, so, right. and, I, and it was one of these things where I was like, "Well, I'm here. I think we can discuss the, it. Great. If given not, what we just discussed, and right. you're gonna come back with those penetrations. Maybe you can put them together yeah. for the yeah. light." I'd like. Yeah, I talk to your electricians. Drawings and information in front of me rather than just no, not from verbal description. Understood. Yeah. 
Understood. I just was getting... At least I know what's coming. Yeah, okay. exactly. So heads up. We can talk about Windows yeah. next time. Oh, All right. All right. Thank you. So. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. We got some more. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to go with the way it is on the agenda versus the packet. We'll do 147 Congress, which I think is like a page what Isaac put together here, and ask the bracket Sarah. Oh, to, that bracket. Yeah, no, don't yell at me. This is previously approved. There are, uh, I think, five or six items here. They're seeking administrative approval for. So I'll turn it over to Sarah. Good evening. Hey. Um, Yes, as Nick said, there's a few things on here that we're asking administrative approval for um, on the cover sheet. Uh, oh, just a moment. I did bring. A brick. A brick. A brick. <laughs> a brick and the thin brick. I understood it was difficult to find. And to be fair, it took me a hot second to find it when the contractor told me where it was. Wait, what was out there? What's in your hands or something more? He well, actually put it on the wall I behind, behind the. So if you go around the corner, right next to Jimmy's, it looks like the brick just stops. But if you, if you go around, there's the brick return, and he actually put it on the brick well, return. Thank you so for it's, bringing it. It's in. hard to find, but this is exactly That's this is a stain. loose brick. Yep, this is the stain on a random red brick that they had in the basement of that building, uh -huh. and then this is our thin brick in here. So you can see that they are very consistent in tone. A pretty good match. They won't be directly against each other, so they'll be more like this, right? So, but that's that. That was the first one. Um, is, is the concrete wall color remaining, or is that going to get treated? No, it'll stay. Okay. I think they're painted. Yeah, that's not the is natural. The is the front one natural? The split front? The split yeah. face, yeah. That one is too. Okay. I thought that one was painted. No, it was concrete color. Yeah. yeah, they're like that whitish. Just the concrete color. Yep. Yeah, we weren't planning on changing that. Um, replacement of the existing storefront with new storefront. We made um, an adjustment to the north canopy footprint from square to the curved canopy per your request. The adjustment to the west elevation, I'm going to ask that you um, not consider. We had the gas meters moved, so it's no longer an issue. What was that again? The adjustment to the west elevation, mm -hmm. um, the stair location and the glazing you side. You the stairs back into the building. Yeah. The we were, we were pulling them back because they had added a fourth gas meter and we needed to make that accommodation, but they moved the gas meters today. Huzzah! Um, so that they're two over two, and so we don't have to make that accommodation anymore. Okay. Um, Which means that you don't fill in that window either. We do, but it's on the interior. Um, exterior lighting and some MEP vent locations. Those are the things that we're looking for. So just flipping through. Next page is a previously approved context rendering. The next page seven is a proposed. You'll see that the coloring is a little bit different on this because we've added spandrel panels to the uh, storefronts, uh, which is in keeping with what they have now. We did lighten up um, on the previously approved version. There's the sign band above the canopy is, is that dark gray color. And we've, we've swapped that to be the lighter tone since the spandrel panels will be dark. Have a light so that up. The second floor band under the window is gone. It's not gone. It's just it's the natural. It's painted to match. I realize in that rendering it looks like it's gone, but I promise we did not remove it. I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, so page eight is the same thing previously approved. Uh, that has the shows the square canopy on the work lot. Page nine is proposed and shows the curved canopy. Um, makes a little bit more of that back, that back entrance. We just have some signage on there, very generic wording. I'm not sure exactly what's going to say yet. So that's all you've changed, is just add that. Just add that curve. Curve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Nice. It does look nice. 
Um, the next page are some night renderings to show the amount of lighting for exterior lighting. Um, I can get into it a little bit more, but essentially along that brick reveal, we're proposing a, um, a, a recessed linear light similar to that. Um, in this case, since it's so low to the grade, it would be tamper proof um, and it will just provide a little glow. Will it be adjustable? In temperature? And intensity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Um, and then along the top, uh, at there'll be a, a little wall wash. And aside from that, the lighting would be just can lights underneath the canopies to downlight. Page 11 shows the rear with the curved canopy. The next sheet is just the previously approved floor plan. The next sheet 12 is the proposed floor plan. It shows the areas of alteration um, at page right and left, um, which is the north uh, canopy and the storefronts. And we're asking that that page south where the new addition area of alteration that you just disregard. So then page nine, you would just um, ignore because we're going to keep that as it's currently designed. <clears throat> Yep, and page 13, same thing. Uh, page 10, the previously approved, this just shows the north canopy plan and the south canopy. The, it shows the pattern of the storefront. Um, we originally had a, an infill portion in that storefront. So then the proposed sheet, page 14, shows for the storefront, um, just shows the, the new pattern and there's an additional door that's going in. Um, that is to allow egress out of the basement. Um, we had originally had it wrapping over and into the existing stairway, but once we poked a hole in there, we realized we didn't have enough room at the landing to accommodate that. So we have to add a door. Um, for the north canopy plan, it just shows the curve. The next page is the previously approved uh, roof plan. Page 15 is the proposed roof plan, again, just showing the curve canopy outline. The next two pages are the west elevation that we're not going to modify. Uh, page 13 shows the north and south elevations that were previously approved. Page 17 shows the proposed version. You can see on the north elevation, it's just the extension of that canopy. We do have um, a couple of mechanical venting on the back. And on the south elevation, where the storefront is, you'll see that we have this mandrel panel shaded in on our storefront with a couple of mechanical vents coming out there as well. Um, we do have a couple of uh, goosenecks shown on top of the new addition. Um, we can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we do have the ability to, um, which I also found out today, um, to put them on the main roof. That's great. Because they're, they're very visible. It, yes. Very visible. Yeah. We figured out a way to, or we, our contractor, who's awesome, um, figured out a way to get them into the building and up through the main, onto the main roof for that. For those particular the heating system or what are they for? They are they're individual tenant heating systems. Yeah. So for the makeup air. Makeup air and stuff. Um the um fenestration sheets you can ignore. So it's going to change. And then I have um the proposed storefront with the spandrel panels. So that's just the sizes and patterns. Um, and then the previously approved brick, I, I included this because it had the brick material. And 23 is the proposed uh, gooseneck, an image of what the mechanical louvers will look like. They will be painted out to match the siding material that they're installed on, and with the, exempt, the exhaust vent cap. And the last sheet we have are the, um, the lighting sheet. So I, we have an example of a wall graze with its exact cut sheet. 
uh, an example of the recess light at the brick reveal that's shown on a on a reception desk island kind of at that that uh toe kick um that exact cut sheet and then there's a cut sheet for the down light Where's the wall wash? Which one were these? Um, right about the word proposed. Those are kind of examples of a, of the wall wash. What is the pedestrian experience of those wall wash lights going to be? In terms of will it be in their eyeball? Yeah. No. No, but they, they will be able to see underneath because the grade slopes away. But we are cognizant of that. It will it will direct towards the building. Um, it'll have a, a frosted lens, so during the daytime, it's not super obvious that it's a light fixture. It's also tamper resistant. You know, again, just because you're so close to grade, um, it will be. If you're looking at it from an elevation standpoint, it will be behind the trim, so it'll be right trim trim. And then this little gap in between is where it'll be installed. So you'll be able to see it from the bottom, but not so much, you know, if you're across the street on Maplewood at the other parking lot. Bridge Street. Bridge, Bridge Street, thank you. Um, you wouldn't be able to see it. You would just see the, the light. Thank you. Same as the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's okay. pretty standard. Chemical. What is the appearance of the spandrel collapse? Um, that's a great question. Um, it would be gray um, and smooth. Okay, because you have vents in it and you have your regular glass. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at night it would be fine, but it's just wondering if it's going to come off black. Can it come? No, I'm just trying to think of. Yeah, so the storefront is black, right? Mm -hmm. So would you not want it to be matching the storefront? Well, I, I, I think you, you would. Is this candle glass should be almost a, a suggestion that it is glass, but it's not right. because inside you don't have the head right. The head right. Right. So. I initially yeah. tried regular, regular yeah. transparent glass, but then when we put those louvers in, there, it just it didn't, didn't look right at all yeah. because of the contrast. And we tried with the patterns, like to make them the louvers feel intentional. It was just mm -hmm. too busy. That was awkward. Yeah. I don't have the answer for it. <laughs> just a question. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Any other questions, comments? One, one more. Yeah. A couple of stipulations there, one regarding the intensity of lighting and making sure they comply with the city's ordinances. Absolutely. And that the gooseneck vents will be relocated to the top of the second story. Yeah. The main book. Thank you. Great. Great. As Great. presented. Yeah. Thank you. Did I miss anything? No. No. Okay. So we got one more. Um, Deer Street. 61 deer. All I got looking at the uh, request was that the, the garage door has shifted from Maplewood Ave yeah. to Deer Street. So okay. it's a lot less visible. Uh, and obviously the facade on Maplewood Ave looks better than the, to the pedestrian uh, moving around this building. And the door that's being relocated onto, it's not on Deer Street, it's on the side of the building with the driveway going to Deer Street. So it's a better the place. driveway comes in from where? Deer Street. Deer Street. So beside the there, building. So there wasn't a road there before. There was a driveway on the left of the building on Deer Street, but it was not servicing this building. So there's an easement on the left, the building that isn't yet built on the left of that will use it, and this building on the right will use it. Oh, okay. The garage door is in the middle of the building. Yeah, so there's no road in between, but Correct. there's an easement, a driveway. Yeah, driveway. No. Okay. We're in sure common ownership, back. those two lots. Okay. So they've redesigned obviously that corner yeah. on Maple Ave. Yeah. That's a big win, right? Yeah. That's a win. Yeah, it is. So that I think that's it. Does anybody here 
Carlin, anything to add? No, I yeah. a lot of sheets here, but we I, talked about it during the meeting uh, originally. That this yes, that it was coming. Right, and it came out of tag. No other substantive change. This is the this is our third location. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's fine. All right. Okay. Um, I move that we approve the administrative approvals with the stipulations that we're given for applications. Okay. Um, do you want to read the stipulations? I don't think so at this point. I've read them all. Okay. Yeah, they're all in the record. Um, this is uh, for the record is four, five, six, seven, and eight. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Again. But we're moving right along. That was hard work. We're through it. Yeah. Public hearing. Uh, petition of Dagny Taggart, LLC, owner of the property located at 93 Pleasant Street, wherein permission is requested to allow changes to a previously approved design. To release the rear stairwell and change to siding material and to temporarily remove existing stone wall. And that's still in there. It's been removed, but that's how it was advertised before okay. it was removed. And reconstruct after construction as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 74, lies within character district four and historic districts. Who's here? Good evening, Tracy Kozak, our well, local architects. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Tracy, just, can you confirm that? Yes, yeah, just to, yes. We withdraw from this application the proposal to remove and rebuild the wall, the stone wall in front. Um, I will say we are looking at reapplying in a modified way for next month, but um, things are moving around, so I have not. I'm not able to present on that tonight. So no, no wall discussion tonight. Not no. tonight. No. All right. Yes, thank you. Do you want to go through the others? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So these are just some really minor coordination things that came up through the process of going through construction documents and uh, permitting. The L so we removed there was a occupied roof deck on the roof that is gone. So the little railing that went around it, the back of the building is gone. The top of the elevator overrun on the back of the building is 14, 16 inches higher to accommodate installation and structure. Just say next. To oh, next. Yep. yep. And uh, these are mostly different views of that. We are changing the Siding, the composite siding approved as uh, poly ash by Borel. We're changing that. We need to change it to a non combustible. Uh, so we're proposing fiber spent party plank uh, for the fire rating that we're. Mm -hmm. So it was under the assumption that Borel was not. It's made of it is resin, though. it's plastic yeah. and wood. So it's a, it, it has it doesn't meet the flame spread requirements for uh, type three B rated exterior walls. It will burn. I, I tried it. Yeah. Um, the trim the trim is Azac and the clapboard siding is hardy clay. Um, just you know the wood the brick is the same. We're not changing the brick. Next. Next. Uh, and just use this is that elevator overrun is in back and um, pretty new. That's where it is. Yeah. Oh, and uh, basement windows. Um, this is the cutaway section through the front hill. There's actually um, those are window wells. So that's the drawing show cut through the window well. You wouldn't actually see it from the road. They're basement windows to match the basement windows on Port Street, adding for them. Actually, next. How far back is that from? The uh, if you go back two pages to the roof plan, you'll see it's it's not it's in back of the tribal house. Here, there. Yeah. Tracy, would you say that the it's not it's not rendering 
um, an accurate proportion of the amount that a chimney that we would see if we were standing on the street and the amount of the overrun, are they the same or are they different? That's not what you'd see from the street at all. It's just a 2D flat um, view. There is a 3D street view, I think, later in the package. Here? Um, from the street, yeah. I think I put a 3D view in for my level. So we'll keep going and we'll get it. Yes. Um, I have a question concerning uh, the decorative railing removal. Um, yes. It, you say it's removed and yet it's there. What's there? This was proposed on the new addition in back of the elevator overrun. Oh, in um, this area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's the new part of the building. We were going to put a roof deck up there. Now we're not. So no need for railing. Yeah. So back then. Oh, I see. For people to use that space. You know, I was almost seeing the line number four go down to the main moving the widow's wall. Or make it total. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, these are the same items, just different views. Really. Oh, the uh, so on the mansion, on the basement windows, window wells, those are shown at, at, the, at the size and configuration they are now. What was originally approved, we were going to make uh, the windowsills lower to the ground. And we're not doing that. We're just keeping them as they are, replacing them in kind. So that's what that changes. Yep. Over here. Yep, exactly. And again, that's cut through the window well. It's not from the street. Next, uh, and side view, uh, again, changing the siding, the elevator overrun, which is way in the distance from this view. This is from the temple from side. The that one lower window in the middle, uh, we that was a double hung originally to match the one on the left. Can't do that with the grade and the foundation, so it's just the top sash. It's three over three, I believe. That, this is the back of the building. Uh, it's not visible public way, we removed two bays of windows uh, for wall and layout coordination. Um, again, that shows you the stairwell coordination, the elevator overrun. Um, on the far left bottom, again, that had those had been uh, six over six double hunks. They're a three over three to accommodate the grade that is existing there. And on the far right, that, that brick wall is an existing brick wall on the addition that was put on the treadwell. There are four existing windows there. It is right on the property line next to the Clipper Tavern. It technically does not comply with fire. If there are ever a fire from one building to the other, there's there's a risk. So we're not allowed to have uh, openings there. Are they there now? They're there now. They're there now. The building's having too much work done on it to allow them to remain. You can't get fire, fire we, protection for those? We could pursue that. Um, it's certainly not an aesthetic reason or there's no program to it. It's just for fire safety. Um, we certainly don't want the treadwell catching fire if the restaurant catches fire. That's why these- The two top windows, how close are they to, to so the, the roof, building next door? The roof of the Clipper Tavern yeah. is at the second floor of the treadwell. So the at upper the floor windows are about 10 feet higher than the roof of the restaurant. No, the ones the you right, see. The, yeah, yeah, they're right touching the restaurant. So these two are yeah, those clear two of, of, of a building right up near the thing. Two on the third floor up here. They're uh, above the roof. They're they are quite a bit the above line. the roof line. They're one story above yeah. the roof. And they're visible. They, they are. Yeah. Yep. Well, what about the infill that I've seen used on State Street and stuff? Um, shutters, closed shutters, things like that. Mm -hmm. Your intention to brick those in? If you do brick them in, you see your intention to brick them in for the recess so that the window open remains, essentially? Yeah, that we would never want be able to weave in. Uh, <laughs> right, they would step it back rather yeah. than have yeah. it flush. The National Park Service has some issues with that. Locally, our tradition has been to just build one inch. Recess. One inch. Yeah. We can certainly. That way, at least we. Still reads the idea like an open, of opening the there is, is remains. As far as the interior program, they're in the stairwell. Yes. 
No, they well, there's a stairwell there on the left. Um, it, the stairwell is being reconfigured a little bit, so that is is not needed for stairwell. Um, the room, the existing room on the right, is a is a bathroom and it's staying bathroom, <laughs> not needed really. So that's it. And the party plank product. Any other questions? Side out, right? Smooth side, smooth out. side yes. <laughs> is that specified here? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. And that's it. Right? Questions, comments? I mean, I think it's unfortunate you have to switch to the party, but. Understand the priority issues. Not, yeah, not that one, but at least on the front. Yeah. Um, all right, so did we ever see a rendering from a street? No, I, I, I couldn't see I don't it. think I have anything. Um, it's kind of moved. Yeah, it's 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 you will be able to see that the upper floor from the other side of Pleasant Street on that end because it is it is higher than the bird. Oh, you're talking about the elevator. Oh, elevator. Yeah. The elevator. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be flat and cementitious. So. The back, that side, the back, the other side are the fiber cement. The side that faces the street actually has the zinc shingles on it. I think. Okay. It has zinc uh, shingles. So we could wrap that around if that's better or make that a darker color. It probably should be the darker color. I think whatever would be into the sky and metal between. Okay. I'm going to open this up to the public now. Anybody in the public like to speak? <laughs> or I sit down or stand. Whatever you care. <laughs> All right, I'm here this evening to speak in opposition to this project. Uh, I think it's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the heat's on and it's loud. Okay. I'm here this evening to speak in opposition to this project. Uh, I think it's an absolutely terrible project because of the configuration. I'm frankly surprised that uh, this board is even seriously considering this project. In the last couple of meetings before this uh, board, uh, last week and last month, I'm delighted that we established that excessive size and uh, mass are sufficient ground in and of themselves for disapproving the project by this historic uh, district commission, uh, even if it, you know, the project otherwise complies with the requirements of the zoning ordinance. Uh, I was delighted that uh, our city planner, Nick Cracknell, gave a very lucid explanation of that effect at the, toward the end of the uh, last meeting. And uh, this is a, a classic example of um, this the additions that the developer is proposing to put uh, on this at the uh, end of this project where the parking where, where the uh, parking lot now is are just way too big and, and way too massive for the setting of a neighborhood I think that the uh, architect you know I've looked at the uh, I've looked at the pictures uh, of the uh, proposed buildings that are to be added on top of the parking lot uh, on the city's website um, Part of the uh, the meeting packet that pertains to tonight's meeting, and uh, you know I think not only the mass and size, I think the architecture itself is grotesque. Uh, it has the look and the uh, two buildings that the we don't have grotesque uh, in our guideline. <laughs> oh, I I'll have to make I, sure. Yes, that I know you'll ha have to make sure that put yes, in here. A lot of people have been making up words like that the last four or five years. I'd like to also remind you that this project has been approved. 
it's not too late. Changes. That we are, it's too late. That we're looking at minor changes, the basement windows, the change of siding, and uh, getting rid of some railings. All right. Well, that being the case, I'll just register my disapproval of it. So uh, I think some, uh, some uh, maybe. Um, well, I won't say what maybe I'm going to do. Sorry. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anybody else in the public? Oh, I'm going to rush here. Uh, I'm just doing some tag team with the city council meeting. So I'm not sure if you are talking about, still talking about the 93 Pleasant Street property. Yes. Introduce yourself first. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Polidura, Middle Street. And uh, so uh, regarding this project, I mean, I know it's been approved. I know there's up for changes. Uh, I heard before I went to the other meeting that the wall is going to be handled in a different way that we probably previously thought it was going to be. I look forward to the details, but I also would like to remind this commission that the approval for this particular property was contingent upon having an archaeology or archaeological survey in that area as soon as the shovels go in the ground in the parking lot area. And I just want to remind you that it is my expectation, and I know other people as well, uh, when the time comes. This was a very historic property. Mr. McNabb knows that, or should have known that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I look That's forward to seeing right here. That's a, yeah. a preservation. Thank you. Asking for that uh, report. So good, good. She's the one. Yeah, she has my number, so she can let me know. <laughs> but that's all I wanted. I mean, I understand they need to make, they need to put this property back uh, online and they would have to make some uh, changes to it. But I know the history behind it. And I just like, maybe they'll dig it in the parking area and they'll find nothing. Or maybe they'll find something. But it's been in there for almost 400 years. I more than likely they will find something. But anyways, that was it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I still need an introduction. I know. Thank <laughs> you. May I sit first, please? Thank you. H Trace, 27 Hancock Street. Uh, this project was originally approved, I believe subject to the wall not being removed. Yeah. So coming back with adjustments, I would hope would be a public hearing and not just an administrative approval. Um, there are many members of this committee who all know fully well that that wall was here long before even Treadwell House was there. It's a dry masonry wall. Taking it down for two minutes and trying to put it back up won't work because you take all the masonry bits and pieces away. So to suggest that you can take it down, number it, and come back a day later, a month later, six months later, a year later, and create the same wall is not possible. So... I thank the world of all you guys. <laughs> Even you, Mr. Wyckoff, I miss you. Um, but I got to tell you, the, that wall is, is a non-starter. It's that important. So no matter when it comes up, whether it's January, February, or March, someone's going to know about it. And we'll be here to support it, even if it can't talk for itself. Uh, the rest of the building, I realize you've all just making improvements on it. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak. And Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year's to right. everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? I'm going to close the public hearing and I'm looking for a motion. Through these changes as presented, I don't think we have any stipulations. Well, the Jeffs had made that the 
window right. brick window plugs be recessed at least an inch from the out of my bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a second that. Okay. Um, some findings, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is, I mean, these are fairly minor to, minor to the overall approved design. Um, we'll have a taller overrun, but it's in the back of the building and, and it is what it is. Um, so, this um, it has conservation and enhancement of property values um, and it has compatibility of innovative technologies. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 sure. Um, okay. okay. All right, so all those in favor say aye. Aye. And against? Opposed. Opposed. All right, one opposed. So yeah, you have your approval. Moving into new business public hearings. Petition of Portwalk, HI, LLC, here of Cathardes Private Investor Owners for property located at 195 Hanover Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the installation of new signage and awnings the green elephant. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on our CESA map 125 as lot 1-2 and lies within character district five downtown overlay and historic district. And who is here to present this? Yeah. Um, Why don't we move it to the end? Okay. Oh, sorry, but if somebody raised their hand here. Yeah, let's give it a better. Is it Becca? Yeah, Becca. Becca? Hi, how are you? Good. Sorry, I missed you. I was like, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Hi, Becca Clifford here on behalf of Sign Design. We're representing the landlord and the tenant at Green Elephant. We are looking to remove the deteriorating wood slat canopy structures that are currently at the storefront and replace them with the awnings with the green elephant logo and to bring some uniformity and consistency with the other tenant awnings that are already located at the property. I'll just say that I remember when we uh, approved these <laughs> and we all wondered how well is this wood going to hold up? Exactly. And it looks awful. Not very well. well. <laughs> it helped. It helped it for a long time, but clearly it, it wasn't. It, right, it, and, it, I, I, and it would hold up. Too that's too right. Much. I it think power if, wash. if it were cleaned and refinished, it probably would be fine. Yeah. I think they're dealing with some leaking through the wood slats and water falling through as well. Oof. That's not. Uh, any other questions or comments or applicant? These are fabric signs. Yes. Uh, what is what is the uh, material? It's umbrella awning fabric material with painted graphics on the two awnings on the corner. And the color matches the ones on the uh, hotel. I believe the hotel they had blue previously, and now theirs are black. The tenant at Green Elephant was requesting the true brown umbrella fabric to be consistent with their branding. Yeah, it's actually color. brown. Yeah, they're brown yeah. in the yeah. front. But it, it, in the packet. Okay. Reads black up there. Another question? Nine. All right, I'm going to open this up to the public. Anybody would like to comment on this? <laughs> Change of awning. And everybody looks like they're all upset that I even asked them. So, uh, I'm going to close this public hearing. And um, right, I'll move that we approve um, this application as presented. Second. Second. Um, I mean, this is it's a new building with. 
new awnings. I mean, they're just replacing it with awnings that are consistent with surrounding. So um, it uh, mm -hmm. has conservation and enhancement of property values and is consistent with the defining character of surrounding properties. There we go. All right. So all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Suppose. Suppose. And so you have your permission. Thank you so much. Happy holidays, all. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is the petition of Brienne Cressy and Cyril Chen, owners of the property located at 46 Mark Street, where permission is requested to allow the installation of solar panels to the roof house as proclaimed and filed in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map. 116 is lot 52 and lies within the mixed research office and historic districts. Who here is presenting this? Really? really? Yep, someone else here. Oh, wow. The pandemic's kicking. <laughs> All right, can you hear us? Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, uh, thanks for uh, hearing uh, our proposal. Um, <clears throat> so um, we're just planning, it's a pretty straightforward uh, project. Um, we're installing uh, or requesting to install okay. uh, yes. solar panels on the roof. Yep, and that's the layout of the house and the roughly the locations of where the solar panels would be. Okay, Marco. I, I just want to, it's going to sound like a really stupid question, but David has the same question. We went to look at this separately, and it says in the staff report this building was done in 1860. Is the staff report wrong, or yes. is this a new house? No, no it's this a, a new major house. renovation. It was a major renovation. Yes. I, they didn't tear it down. Uh, no, did not tear it down. No. Yeah. It's just totally. It just got it's so in the very to my eye. It looked like yeah. something that was built. No, it's only. Yeah. It might, well, maybe some frames. Parts of the car. Um, <laughs> I think yeah. everything else was new. It's one of yeah. these total yeah. renovations. Yeah. Yeah. That explains why I was confused. I, okay. I thought it was, oh, I don't know. When I bought the house, I was under the impression it was um, a new, like it was totally new, but I could be wrong about it. <clears throat> foundation board. Parts of the park that I looked at it was whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a question in that um, there wasn't anything in the packet that showed what the panels actually look like. Um, there is in the application packet, if you scroll all the way down to page 13, um, it shows an example of what the solar panels look like. They're, they're pretty much kind of, they're just, they look like black glass panels. And I guess what I, that's fine, but I, what I don't see is sort of like what the array, I mean, I, I yeah, I guess that one of them is there. It's, it's just hard to see, um, it's hard to imagine Mm. what the mm. actual end look is going to be. Um, so sometimes, oftentimes when we get these applications, we'll have a rendering that kind of, even if it's just a sort of a general Photoshop to show on an actual picture what these things are going to look like in place. Um, so that's, one thing that I would like to see before I can make a decision. The other thing is that we generally really try to um, have the most visible face, the front of the buildings, not have solar panels on them so that they're not visible. Um, we, we haven't approved very many so, solar panels unfortunately, but it's just that we have a very dense district and the roofs are very visible. Yeah, the <clears throat> 46 Mark Street's pretty 
tucked away as well. It's it's pretty far back from the main strip where on Court Street. So it's not, I mean, if the concern is that it's, you know, the, the look of it is distracting for the historic district, it, it, it's kind of pretty tucked away in its sort of own little neighborhood. Um, if that helps at all, if that makes any difference. I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with Park Street. It's, and so it's more like sometimes, you know, the back of the house could be an appropriate place, but not the front where you walk down the street and it's there in your face. Well, I think a lot depends on the yeah. direction. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine what they'll look like, and that's why I can't support it. I, I think that solar panels in our historic district have to be nearly hidden, and these are very prominent. Um, they, they really are going to have an extreme impact on the house itself. I, I know we struggle over screening a little bit of a condenser and in some lines. This is this is covering you know 90 percent of the roof in a in a high-tech panel. So for that reason, I won't be supporting. And these panels, uh, as I understand, are elevated too, right? They're, they're not completely flat against the roof. When you look at it, there's at least four to six inches difference between the roof line and the panel line. At least uh, that's my experience yeah. on my neighbors. Uh, roughly, the standoffs are, are roughly one and a half inches, I believe. Um, These are thinner. Uh, oh, okay. But I would like to see a picture. Yeah, yeah. I think I can see a picture too. Okay. Um, uh, I would like to comment on the orientation of these panels. And my comments are not exactly the same as other people's on the boards. Um, you know, wanting you to hide them in, in an area um, that, uh, you know, we can't see as I would want, if you're going to install them, I would want them to be pointing south or within 15 degrees of south. And um, going back and looking at, at north apparently is just to the right of the uh, middle school, most of these panels are pointing the wrong direction. So I, I yeah, we wonder what the- um, I don't so understand why they, um, north is directly to the right, 15 degrees or so of Mark Street. Which faces State Street. Which court, court, I guess. Court, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the front-facing panels face Court Street, which appears to be in the northerly direction, which may not be a very efficient place to put the right. panels anyway, which may resolve your problem right. with some of the members not wanting to see them from Mark Street. I would certainly want to see the site plan yeah. um, clearer, more clearly than just that little, uh, you know, little compass at the bottom. Um, well, the yeah, the, as far as the orientation goes, we did go through it with the solar consultants, and it was considered efficient enough to warrant insulation on that side. Um, the, and and it, we came up with the size of the array on all four, four sides yeah. on our solar needs. Yeah, there's not a lot of coverage um, around the house, and so there's actually a fair amount of daylight. Um, certainly in the summer and spring and fall. Winter time, it's a little bit less on the north, it's less on the north side, obviously, but um, the rest of the year, there is a fair amount of um, sun exposure on that roof, um, which is why we decided to also put it on the, the north facing side. Um, <clears throat> okay. Thank the, you very much. Uh -huh. I, I think we do need um, to see a, a plan of the roof. A photo simulator. Yeah, a photo simulator. Okay. Um, and then, it, and I guess maybe talk to the supplier or whoever is coordinating the street to see, you know, what would it be sufficient to take it to not put on the panels on the sides facing Mark Street, but on the other sides? Some space. Yeah. Face out and west. Um, 
Certainly. Um, yes. Having had a house that would place solar panels on, um, placement is everything. Um, and you can't, you know, try to make it work because it's against principles of this committee or general. But I have to say that having just uh, rejected, well, actually, it was withdrawn, but I think it was heading in the direction of rejection. And I'm in theory, I'm obviously not against solar. I've done it myself, and I just think that maybe. We want to have some consistency because we don't want to. I feel like if we're going to say no to one person, we have to say no to another, or yes to one person, yes to the other, because I think they're similarly similarly situated. Well, let me, you want to answer that? Yeah, I'll speak. What? I, I'll speak to. Hang on, uh, uh, Johanna. Um, I think solar more than anything makes makes a clear case why. There can't be a one size fits all scenario. And South Mill Street is not the same as the end of Mark Street. Nobody goes down Mark Street if you don't live there or you're lost or you're visiting someone there. Uh, South Mill Street's a little bit different. The front's different than the side, the side's different than the rear. You've got to really, you've got to triage. And I think that's, as a commissioner, that's what your guidelines tell you you need to do. I understand um, that, but I don't think that South Mill is really that different. Mm -hmm. Then it's it's got water frontage, and so people on the other side of the water can see it. People driving down Marcy Street, you can see it from Marcy. It's a start of Pickering. Well, and importantly, but and, South and, Mill, it's, and, it's a, and importantly, but South Mill Street. Street, the commission suggested they be put on the back of the house, not nowhere, and but it was typical. Right. Well, they weren't they were. on the wrong exposure. It was the fact that they'd have to be elevated. So no, that person's works. looking for a different solution. Some houses aren't going to work, and some are, and some are going to partially work. I, I think everybody's saying, at least so far, that's spoken. Something could probably work here, but not what's been requested for the people that have spoken. And this is the first application I've, I've ever seen in 10 years with panels on every roof plane. That's unusual. Yeah, all doesn't mean sides. he hasn't gotten that advice from his consultant, but it means <clears throat> different feedback than we've heard from others. North, south, east, west, doesn't matter. We're putting a panel on it. That seems a little odd. Yeah. So I think people are just wanting to confirm it. It may be just dumb luck, but the, the front, so-called front of the house that faces Mark Street happens to be a northern exposure for the most part. They're probably the least efficient. They may disappear. They may not be cost-effective. And he's going to end up getting something approved that actually works and works for this commission as well as himself. That's at least what I'm envisioning is a possibility, maybe for everybody but for him. Yeah. And it's, and it's I'm trying to work for it. Yeah. So I think we're looking at a continuum. So, to, to if I may, you. if I may just quickly, you know, I, to, to speak to the commissioner's point uh, about the the way Mark Street is used, it's it's almost more like a private driveway than it is as much of a street. There's about four properties on that street, and that's kind of it. You can't see the house from Court Street. You can almost not see it from Court Street. Um, in fact, you know, having lived here for a few years, I didn't even know this house existed until we bought it because it was so tucked far back. I don't know, you know, I, and and. As far as I know, I'm, I'm actually fairly certain the house is, was, I mean, I think they used the same footprint, but the whole house was constructed anew, uh, foundation and all, in 2014. Yeah, um, I understand, and I think we all do the uh, location of the house and the uh, virtual privacy of that street, but still, um, I think we do have a few things that we need to uh, clear up. Okay. So that the house with the panels photoshopped on or however they do that. And um, looking over the number of panels and, and the location of panels that you have. Mr. Chairman, may I suggest that, that, uh, that I, I like uh, uh, Mr. Ryan ha have an issue with the solar panels, at least on the front of the building. Um, I see the building, this is somewhat in terms of Every circumstance is unique, 
and we should be adept enough to be able to do that dance. Um, I have no real zeal to see solar panels entering the historic district. Um, the materials, the sizes of the materials, there, there's a lot of scaling issues along with the reflectivities, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there are two unique sides to this house, the south and west side of the building face parking lots. And not only are there few uh, butters to those, you know, that, that the parking lots are large and most people are not going to be in those parking lots looking at this building. It's still a distance away when you're in the library parking lot, it's still a distance away when you're in the parking area behind the addition to the junior high. Uh, so I think if I were the applicant, I would be very concerned about some sort of photo representation of the south and west planes of the roof from those parking areas would be a direction to go to give this a fair hearing for all. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I think you've heard our comments. Is anybody want to add to the public? No, I didn't go to public as well. Can you, can you continue that? Yeah, we're going to continue. Well, I'll put it just in case somebody Does anybody want to speak about this on on Mark Street solar panels? See that was painless. And that was painless. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking for a motion. Move to continue, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. January, right? It's January. We'll continue to January. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. A uh, petition of Braden and Robin Ferrari, owners of property located at 44 Humphreys Court, where permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure. Replace the windows with Green Mountain windows. The removal of the chimney and the installation of the HVAC equipment as per plans on file in the planning department said property is shown on assessor map 101 is lot 45 and lies within general residence B and historic districts. Okay. Here is to present this. Uh, Jay Pruitt presenting. Um, so first and foremost is the windows. Um, they're, they are original, uh, rattly old, sashes, single pane with storms. Um, they're probably their primary concern is lead. Um, they have two little kids and that's one way or another that's gotta be dealt with. Um, so they, they'd like a, you know, insulated glass window. We've chosen the Green Mountain, which we've done before. And they, uh, you know, once the storms come off, it actually looks better <laughs> uh, with the new windows in there. So um, most of the windows, or a lot of the windows that are there now are, are in decent shape. Um, the attic is probably the worst. Um, they would have to be completely rebuilt, the sashes anyways. And, and some of them have been replaced. Um, there's, I think there's two that are like Brosco replacements or something. Um, and uh, other than that, they're, yeah, it's just trying to get a more efficient one going there. Um, and I think we're familiar with the, with the Green Mountain product. Yes, we are. Um, secondly, is the chimney, which uh, is not going to be used at all. It's, you can see it in. I think the next picture, you get, that's from across the street. You can't see it. Um, those, yeah, so you can see it there. It's not, there's no fireplaces in the house. It's not, it was never used as a feature. It was purely, it must have started out as a coal furnace and then now it's oil. Um, and so it's in really bad shape. It needs to be. Uh, it's essentially falling down, but so it needs to needs to come down in some fashion. So we're trying to trying to get rid of it before there's a problem. Um, and last 
is the condenser, which I think is pretty straightforward. It's uh, it's a fully fenced in backyard. Um, it would be 10 feet from property lines, which is what it needs to be. Um, and it, the, the backyard is, is fully landscaped. And it, you know, even if the fence wasn't there, I don't, I, I don't think it would be fully screened, but um, so that's, I think that's pretty straightforward. So. <clears throat> Where's, where's the conduit coming off the condenser? So uh, going from the basement. The, so right directly yeah. in. Yeah. It's a, there's a porch on the back. It would come out of the basement and right to the condenser. This is a little different. This is the old, you know, going into the furnace type of thing. It's not a mini split. Got Correct. It. It's not a mini split. Good. Yes, right. I started, um, about the windows. Sure. Um, First of all, I just want to say original windows are not bad. Yeah, no, I'm not <laughs> so, saying they're bad. Okay, good. Um, I can't approve the replacement of windows, especially for original, unless I have like good documentation to show that they are not um, durable or able to be restored at all. And I don't know if they've had a chance to talk to anybody about restoring the windows. Yeah, I have. Um, it's, you know, we did the same thing to our house. We have all of our original windows, and when they get restored, the lead paint on the interior can be removed. Mm -hmm. So um, it's um, it's definitely worth considering keeping them, especially since um, a historic window, such as if they they're still here, they're still around, they will last another one hundred years if they're maintained, whereas even the green mountain windows, which are great replacement windows, will not last that long. Um, so I, that part of the application I can't go forward with at the moment until I have more information. Um, what do you need to be able to do that? A detailed window survey? With so window. every 37 windows you want yeah, to survey? Well, that's window? Window. Yes, that's what we do. I don't think we've seen a photograph of all the windows in the house, but we've often sent somebody in take a look well, i'd say my recollection is at a minimum you send somebody in but have we have already done that and no uh, oh you guys has, oh okay but normally we require a survey and yes we yeah. just did this on richmond street um uh, with that house that had the hardy in the windows when there are original windows and and even when they're mixed in with with old windows and then with replacement windows it's important to make an informed decision to know that. So you've already done, you put eyeballs on all of these photographs of each of the windows, photographs of the facades. It's not that onerous. You number them all, you have a close up, interior, exterior, and then the four building walls with numbers. We, we, we gotta get there and we get there increasingly with these applications, because as Reagan said, once those windows are gone, they're gone. Uh, so, and usually you're rating the age as best you can and the condition. Because as you've said, the attic's worse than the second floor, which might be worse than the first floor. Um, because it's frequent here that the, the original windows stay on the front facade and sometimes the front and side. Just like sometimes there's hardy on the back, sometimes on the side, it's usually never on the front. It's the same triage, just like the solar panels for each of these, each of these components. So I, I think that's what Reagan means when she wants more information. And it's not that difficult for you to put that together. Um, and then we usually decide, and maybe tonight would be a, a time to do that, whether a couple of members or all of them want to go and see these windows. But I, I would think given you're here and you presented this, while you put together that survey, the commission could designate a couple of people here to call me, call you, and come out and look at them once you've got that little handout. Sure. Yeah. And while they're I there, they I can look at the windows too. Because Christmas is coming. <laughs> yeah. The little ones. Yeah. Well, we have a meeting in three weeks, so that's what you'd be shooting for. Okay. And Martin. Martin. I, I suspect I know the answer, but in that bow out um, bag, they're not curved. Plenty. They're not. No. Okay. No. Yeah. That is the oddest looking detail. All right. Those two windows in that. There's one on Middle Street that's <laughs> now is totally curved. Yeah. My brother's one window. 
And the current windows are one over one, two over two, one. Two, two, two over one. one. Two over one. The majority right. of the ones that I looked at had uh, observable cylinder glass uh, in them, which is certainly indicative of the period of the house. Yeah. Is what, like 1900? Yeah, yeah. Um, Victor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In late eighteen hundreds. It's nineteen hundred. Yeah. All right. What about the chimney? Which is my next question. Did those houses built in the late eighteen nineteen hundreds. What's the chimney an important feature of it? <laughs> you know, I have my own opinion of these things. I just, we all are allowed to. Um, I have to say, uh, I'm a big stickler for chimneys as they do so much for defining the architecture of the house, I will say that this chimney does very little for me. Um, I don't think that this is a defining feature to the building. I think if, if the chimney were gone and someone were to ask me where this chimney would be, I would point it to the center of the ridge. In other words, I think it's in the wrong place now. <laughs> um, so I, I don't think it's a defining feature in case anyone wanted to know my opinion. It never had any... Uh... No, I connections think, i think you're probably you're right i think it was for yeah. for coal stoves so, so it's been the back. Hole, yeah. like, fireplace opening they just had yeah, yeah. the holes yeah. The, okay. Okay. kitchen mm -hmm. kitchen yeah. maybe a better yeah. um last time i was in the house the chimney on the second floor i was in terrible condition terrible condition I, can I speak to that? Yeah, sir. I'm kind of shocked because <laughs> I, would, I, I would have thought that you were going to defend that chimney. Oh, I hate to disappoint chimney. you, saving the chimney. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's terrible. <laughs> but anyway, no, I, I just think you would look at this house and say, no chimney, and this, this house must have been built in the last 20 years or something. <laughs> and that you have such, you know, you take the chimney out, all you got is roof, the roof plane down. And I sympathize with the idea of Keeping that chimney is you know, just something that's very maintenance heavy and not really serving anything. But uh, I'm just shocked that you treat it down that quick. But uh, you know, I'm shocked. Are you saving it? Are you for saving the chimney? I'm kind of leaning towards, yeah. uh, you know, you know, I'm I double think even if there's sort of a, a faux chimney, I think that's a very prominent. Um, Proud piece of the of the roof line down there. Okay. Could they know. just build from the attic up? Like that? Could that I, that'll last thirty years. It's just, yeah. <laughs> now I see. Um, well, well, you think if they did the whole thing from the basement up, well, you sure. could get back to? Uh, it yeah. stay, but, but they don't use it. It's not a chimney, I mean, I, they're not, it's not functioning. I, I agree with Mr. Adams on this one. If it were a bigger, more substantial chimney, then maybe, but. Yeah, I'm just curious. I'm also in agreement on that. So we have the chimney, but we don't have the windows. And the, I guess the placement of the pendentor is. Okay. You're on starter. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, kind of hurt the guy. <laughs> what's what's with the no? I don't think that started. He said, yeah. Exactly. Oh, oh, I know. Uh, so, so we need um, to uh, have a site walk. Look at do we need a site walk or do well, everybody want to see the windows? And trust. Why don't, why don't we get two or three people? Two, yeah. three, no more. Two. 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 Dave, do you want to come? Yeah. So, okay. Sure. So Dave, John, and, and Reagan. Yeah, Reagan, 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 Reagan. Margo wants it? No, we can't get no, more than three standing members of Rayla Quorum. I prefer. Oh. Then we got to post it as a sidewalk. Who really wants to go? Uh, David and Karen. No, uh, no, Karen I think you and no. John. <laughs> you, Dave, Dave, I can take three. I'd be happy to go if I, I can make it. And you're back up? How's that? Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Somehow we get right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so we're going to coordinate on this. Well. Right. I'll give you a chance to actually put this together first and okay. get it to them. Just, Just hold the change okay. windows now. Anyway. Just one more thing. What system of replacement are you proposing? Yes, for the windows. For the windows? Yeah. Um, well, there's two, and, I, you know, we hadn't really fully decided. There's the uh, concealed uh, balance, and then there's the sort of framed unit. And 
frame units, I think, are a little better. Um, you do lose you lose about an inch and a half in height and width, um, and the concealed uh, balances. You but you would exercise replace the concealed. Yeah, those are, oh, it's just so we're keeping the the existing frame will stay of the existing window. Exterior trim stays. Interior trim stays, nothing matters, but, um, and then it's just a- well, One's an insert and one's a sash replacement. Right. Those are your two options, right? Usually sash replacements. Sash. You know, one Less. thing that doesn't get considered when you talk about, especially in a home like this of 1880s, 90s, 1900, is that space with the window weights in it. And it's a large space, it's totally open. And those window weights acts like a radiator and if you were to do a thermal image with those window weights in there you would have these glowing blue things hanging next to your window and that's essentially what they do they they, they absorb the cold and and they pull in the heat and um, it's a very inefficient system do these actually have weights oh yes yeah. no. oh no, no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, the windows that are there. No, they, they they probably probably not to get too deep into the yeah. weeds, but when you do this sort of thing, don't you open the pockets, remove the sash weights, and then fill the cores with? Yes, yes, sir. We yeah. can replace. That's yeah. what we would do. So replace those windows. That's I what think any sure. respectable contractor would do it. That definitely. Way. And, so I guess the point is, it's just not as simple as as slapping the frame. He's he's saying that leaving the original windows in. Is it's a lot ah, less efficient. Sure. Ah, I see. I see your point. Okay. All right. We good? January. All right. So we yes. need a so motion. Wait, motion wait, to... Yeah. Is anybody in the public? Oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. I'm asking if anybody looking. Nobody. Gun shy tonight. I know. I wish I had. I take a picture of you guys. I really. Well, so can. Yeah. You do the whole thing. Yeah. Well, yes. Three. Yeah, yeah, one one move. 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 Okay. Um. I. Yeah. Yeah. Move that we. Continue. 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 Continue to January. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, petition of Aaron and Allerton C. Owners for property located at 295 and Maplewood Avenue, Unit 3, where a commission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure. Replace the front door and six windows of the unit as the plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 141 as lot three, lies within character district four L2 in the historic district. Hi. I'm here. Good evening. Sure. Aaron C. All right. Um, thank you for um for hearing us today. Um we are our recent uh residents to uh Portsmouth and Welcome. excited to be here. Thank you. So our first experience with this uh this forum and this has uh been actually really interesting. So thanks for having us. It's better. Doesn't it? <laughs> um so so we have a uh, front door and six front windows um that we um, are looking to replace. Uh, the front door is um, um, leaky, drafty. When it rains, we get water in the front door. Um, you can see daylight basically, you know, through the seams and things like that. It's in need of uh, of replacement. Um, for the door, we are uh, proposing a thermo true uh, door. I think the specs basically you have uh, associated with it. We're looking for just a like for like replacement associated with it, and so that is the door, and it's got a small window cap. Uh, right there on the top part of it. So it's the whole thing that we're looking to replace uh, in a in a similar format. And is that, it looks like the existing door is um, metal. Press or metal. Is, um, is, it, is it? Press metal, that's what it is. So this, so the new one. <laughs> yeah. The, well, my point is that it's not original or old. No. Oh, no. no. But the replacement door, is that um, a composite or? Can you tell John and the or anybody in the specs that they're fiberglass? Is it in the specs here? It is a white composite, which that's painted black. It's the bottom one right there. Yes, transform. Yes. So it gets the inside of it is essentially. Um, 
I hate to say particle board type material, but the inside of it is it's got some sort of thermal some kind of thermal fill. Fill, yeah. But it's wood and it's very heavy. Very good. We're looking for to protect against the elements, but but would like to actually It'll remain help, again, but... sound also much better than metal. Yep. Very cheap. Yeah. So that's the door. The windows, I'm a little hesitant to have a conversation about windows <laughs> given what I just heard. But we do not have original windows that were looking at a different place. My understanding is that uh, by best estimate, these were from the 50s. Um, they are leaky and provide a lot of draft basically coming through them. Um, and we're looking to try and put something in that's going to be more efficient, provide that sound barrier talk that you spoke about, um, uh, Mr. Wyckoff, as well as uh, as well as protection from the elements um, also. Yeah, I see they have those aluminum sliding balances. Mm -hmm. Are they divided or are they simulated or simulated divided? Are they they appear to be single, single lights, light. yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I was unclear, and this could easily be my fault, but I, I, I remain unclear as to which six windows you're speaking of. So is there a picture of, do we have a I picture, have a picture of the front side, of the, front side so, of the house? So, so the, the, right. <laughs> the, the, the building is on the, if you're familiar with the, the bu sense, building yeah. on those are the six windows right there, the base floor, um, on the sort of left-hand side is Port City Barber. Mm -hmm. And then there is a residence, which is ours, which is the top. If you're facing the front of the building, top, right. And then top left, is, and the, the the door that we're talking about is immediately, you know, bottom right. And then there's another unit uh, which is top left mm -hmm. as well. So these are the top, mm -hmm. are the six windows on the right hand side of the building. My issue, without going any further into the conversation, is I'm a stickler for things that may be unimportant, but. Uh, all the windows in the front of the building should have some sort of like a similar look. You're talking about putting windows in that will have no storms on one side and two divided light with storms on the other side. So it just seems seems like your 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 door, I, the door that you're referring to, actually says uh, a different number than the application. Um, it says the the, the three yeah nine, the the, the official five. building is 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 uh, two ninety five. And, and there the, are three different parts to it. There's right on the on yeah, Lakewood Avenue. There are two doors in the same facade of the building, and they look not only look different now, but they will continue to look different. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not warm to that, but, but I, I understand that you were only in one part of the building. And <laughs> I got that. It's yeah, not right. the message. It's just I'm not sure I'm, I'm keen on it. But the windows seem like a real problem. However, I may feel about the doors. So our next door neighbors who live in the condo right next to us um, are coming to, I think, uh, request about a door also. They also want to replace their windows. They just financially can't right now, but they basically said, whatever we do and get approved, they will do. So we're, comes. <laughs> right. so we're a three-person condo association. I mean, it's us, two condos, and the Port City Barbershop. Now, are we being sold to build? So, it's, no, it's yeah, a, well, no, no, we don't need no, this a lot. It's it's a condos are, are yeah. difficult, and normally there'd be a stipulation on, for example, if you were the first to be here in a while from your association, there'd be a stipulation from the commission that all other windows on the building should match, which gives them an easier pass at coming in here later. So, choosing that the correct window now is the most important because they're likely going to find their way into the other openings. But it'll make it easier for your other owners, regardless of when they show up, to put in the same window. Yeah. The old Franklin School. But this is a problem Franklin. we always have. That was a mm -hmm. nightmare. These kind of yeah. Well, yeah. When one of the challenges now, I believe, is the windows don't all perfectly match either. So on the back side of the building, I know they're not the same. I guess yeah. we just purchased no the building, rules, no so they're not. They're not there's there's a big difference that. on a facade, one wall, yeah. where you have two different windows that are <laughs> different. Side. That's what I mean on the back of the building, right? Which is they're not, not what we're talking space. about. They're not. They're I not. Understand. They're not the same. But it, yeah, this is the public view of this building. Correct. And you'll have different windows, as David's saying, facing the street. 
So how similar are your proposed windows to those, uh, to the best of your knowledge, in terms so, of how they're going to look? In the so college? when I met with them from Richie Lumber, they basically said we would do a like for like six over six, black on the exterior to match, to make it look similar to what it looks like now, white on the inside, which is what we have. So that that's what they that. that's what they implemented so that it would still have that same look and feel that it currently has. So do they measure the mountain profile and the, the details that matter uh, mm -hmm. and make sure this spec in here matches? Well, this says 30 and 5 eighths by 52 and 3 quarters. Somebody has measured. He measured every single one of yeah, the six. That's the opening, yes. not the mountain size. I'm the mountain saying. size, I'm, uh, well, we just don't understand. The Munton size is is set by the sash size, so these are standard. These are pretty well standard. Oh, you're talking about the yeah. five eighths one? Of course, the little five eighths stuff that matters. Yeah. This is three fourths, three quarters. This says three quarter. Three quarter grill bar. So that's pretty wide. That's and wide. if these are three quarter, that's good. But if these are thin, the right. meaning the, you mean the existing. Yeah. existing. What do you think, Dave, on a federal building? Eleven six inches. <laughs> oh, well, oh. Level 16. That's kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. that's where the five inches and three quarters come in. Yeah. <laughs> All interpretations of the level 16. So yeah. I mean, you asked. Yeah. I, I, so you are know, you good with what's being expected in respect to that? If, if we were to fenestrate the building with those windows, uh, the, with the Fibrex exterior, which we, we've approved in the past, yeah. and find better than vinyl, um, mm -hmm. the wood interior, which seems like some care is being bought and you put into this thing, that's not in a kit where the windows have to get smaller to fit in the thing, and they're not going to try to bash out the damn windows. Um, these window sills of this building are, are in peril. They, these are old, worked to me, look like uh, limestone uh, uh, windowsills, and, and they're in tough shape. If someone were to get in there and treat them roughly, we would find pieces of stone landing on the street. Granted, that's something that's going to happen eventually, but it sure doesn't have to happen now with some care. So it sounds to me like this is a reasonable deal. Uh, but having half of the building have storms and, and squirrely sashes and half the building not, it's, it just doesn't, it's hard to be for that. Yeah. Okay, anybody else want to come? I mean, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I, don't know. I, I just say I wouldn't disagree, and I'd, I'd like to really have some photographs that give you a whole sense of the building, not just up in the well, middle. You, and I'm looking at these windows that are item well, 200, item right 300. Don't care, you to speak to you. Okay. Um, I mean, there's, there's that that pattern is looks so these look so out of proportion, but it's so do those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, talking about the third floor. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they, they are squashed, or they might have originally been rear three. Yeah, because well, they could have been six or three. Bar. All right. They were probably six um, over three in the third floor. I've, I've seen all kinds. Yeah. The large lights of glass to make them three over three when this building was built were available, but but still not all that popular. The six over three was a common thing. Having the window open to get a little, get rid of a little bit of that steaming heat in summertime is valuable. So essentially, you're replacing the the stash pattern um, with what you have now up yeah. on the third floor. Right. Any other comments? I mean, we've, we've done this before. I look at the Rockingham, where we've approved a certain type of replacement window, and some of them have been in place, and some of them have not. Um, and I think it's important, like Nick said, it's important now to get the replacement correct so that down the line, everybody else gets the same one and it looks good and it's going to last. Um, so I'm familiar with the Anderson 400. Um, I think the, what I don't like about those is the sort of track that comes on the exterior for the screen. Um, and just make sure you know that we usually, 
what half, half screen is it's in here it's not yep. the whole thing yep. um, <clears throat> but it's not a it's not a bad window um certainly you know there are others that are a little bit simpler on the exterior but I also know right now that all window all new windows are like six months out so yeah it's <laughs> After my heating bill is through the roof, we'll right. wait until summer and then I'll take care of air conditioning. Yeah. We're all in the same. I know, I know. Anybody else? Any other opinions on this type of window? Again, we got to get sure everybody's good with the Anderson 400. Given what's there, the changes the whole ballgame. Mm -hmm. I would just get rid of one of those the smaller windows. I guess with a lot of windows and have three or three. Um, so that's a suggestion. You guys um, here, uh, Martin, to get rid of the horizontal one. Make it three, have three over three. three. That'd be a better direction to go with the building. And we actually would be open to that. The reason when they came and proposed these was because we, we were trying to make it as like over like for like is why we did it. I think we would we'll be good with that if you guys are. We just we're trying to be consistent. We would be fine. We left. So um if there's anybody in the public that would like to speak to this, there's not hardly anybody left of you. <laughs> or staffs at the end of the agenda. Um, so I'm going to close this public hearing. And um, for a motion. I don't even know the page. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have a job. I guess I have. Um, I move that we um, approve with the stipulation that three over three. So the three over three. Three over three. Windows. And um, any others? Was there was a lot of talk to no. We, we can't stipulate what the neighbors yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that is what we would, we would um, suggest a blanket approval. Yeah, blanket approval for the other unit in the building or oh, units. Okay. How many other neighbors do you have? Just, just the, the one next. And yeah. they actually just said whatever we get approved, yeah. Yeah. they'll go to the well, same people. Yeah, we want to stipulate that as long so as they can they see that. No, that's. Yeah. What would we right. approve? Or their right. buyers? So they know they that they're up. coming to you. Can I ask a point of clarity? Because I think I heard you say um, that the three over three just for the third floor, are you saying for all yeah, of them? Yeah, no, yeah. just the third floor. Just for the third yeah, floor. Third. So it's six over six for the second floor, three yes. over three for the third. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Because it's, they're so small. Okay. Yeah. Um, could I add a stipulation that just the, the, with the door that we trim? If you were, if you end up replacing the trim around the door, it still remain wood. Okay. Yeah, that's great. All right. And, we, and as half screens are assumed. Sure. Yeah, half screen and All right. Thank you. Any anybody want to Second. give some findings? Second. Oh. Okay. So it's the uh, property values. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's a conservation enhancement of property value, <laughs> according to Mr. Adam. And then it's compatible with the uh, design of surrounding property. Thank you. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I only have a work session public hearing, which Strawberry Bank. Does anyone need a break or anything? No. This is a work session public hearing requested by Strawberry Bank Incorporated, owner of the property located at 66 Washington Street, 66 Marcy Street, Puddle Dock Restaurant. Okay. Where in permission is requested to allow the removal of the existing canvas frame patio cover? fence and the brick patio and new construction to existing structure, new enlarged patio space with covered closable bar. As per plans on file in the planning department said property shown as assessor map 104 as lot 7-1 lies within mixed research office and historic districts. Welcome. Who are you guys? <laughs> Uh, Mark Janani from McHenry Architecture, here with Richard Desjardins from our office. 
and the uh, owner of uh, the restaurant, Ryan Lentz. All right, welcome. So as, as you explained, uh, we are looking to make modifications to the existing patio, starting with uh, removal of the existing canvas awning in the frame. Um, uh, currently along Marcy Street, as well as on the back of the property, you can see in the first part of this photo, photos, uh, there's an approximate six, six foot tall fence. Right now it's providing screening to the street and also to the museum. Uh, we're proposing removing that and replacing it with a slightly lower uh, fence. Currently there's a egress door or gate uh, that goes up to Marcy Street that provides egress from the back of the building as well as the, the patio area. Uh, and also in the bottom right hand photo there, you'll see uh, there's the electrical entrance to the building, which has a meter, uh, conduit and, and box. Uh, part of the application there is that we're planning on screening some of that so that it's not visible from the street or, or from diners or um, on the patio. Next page on A2 uh, is an existing site plan. So as I mentioned, the existing fences on the left and right. And currently there's uh, the patio is all brick. There is also an existing bulkhead you see in the bottom right of the patio. And the entrance or access from the existing restaurant right now, there's a covered entrance with a gable right there in the middle. Uh, moving on to A3 is our proposed patio. We're also looking to, besides change materials, uh, we're showing a stone, uh, like a blue stone or something here that's actually gonna match uh, materials that they have on the front of the building currently uh, by the main entrance and by the parking lot. But we're also looking to expand the patio further to the left by about 12 feet uh, and then provide a standard three foot fence uh, that's around to separate the dining area from the, from the museum property as well as again on the opposite side on Marcy Street. And then you can, in this plan, you can see the, the roof of the proposed bar uh, to the left of the entrance, you know, on the left, upper left corner of the building. And A4 has an enlarged floor plan and of the, the patio area, as I just mentioned. And then you can see clear here, here the, the outdoor bar that's proposed. So it's 15 feet wide by six feet deep. We're trying to line up with the corner, uh, left, left corner of the building, as well as the uh, the left corner of the covered entrance access area there uh, to square off that corner. There's a single door that provides entrance for bartenders or uh, service staff. There'd be some bar equipment behind there. And then um, we're looking at a stone, uh, stone bar top that would then have three posts that are shown to support the roof. And you see in some of the renderings coming up, uh, folding windows to close the bar, which is a requirement of the health department in the city of Portsmouth. On the right, you'll see the enclosure for the mechanical space that I mentioned earlier for the electrical access entrance, um, which is screened with a sliding barn door to provide access to the space. Bring on real quick, uh, elevations. So straight on elevations of the area we were just talking about. Uh, this shows the folding windows closed. We're looking for the bar top, or I'm sorry, the half wall supporting the bar would have um, to be brick. We're actually looking at reusing the brick that would, from the existing patio that we're removing. And moving on from there, there's a, on A6, we've got a section you idea of again some of the materials heights of the bar top as well as the again the folding window moving on from there are some better perspectives that give you a better idea of um, what it will look like with the bar with the, the folding windows closed when the bar is closed and then again open uh, these are windows that fold up that are hinged in the middle fold up and lock into position um, by the top of the header of the opening. And then on the last page, eight are just some um, material, some existing materials that we're trying to match 
Uh, so our proposed fence would match the existing that's around the front of the entrance of the building. Um, the porch posts were matching, you know, with the chamfered corners uh, that they have on the existing front porch. And then you can see some of the stone shelving, lighting, and also uh, there's an image of perspective folding window. That would be the design. Event. So uh, we're happy to answer any questions. You don't have a, uh, a proposed picture of what it would look like from Marcy Street. Sounds like you're going to lower that right now. It's, it's almost completely separate or locked in six feet. It has to, the roof on top. You're going to have actually space open just a four foot fence. Is that what you're saying? It's going to be roughly like a three foot fence, and there's really going to be there's going to be no cover anymore. So that entire canvas cover is going to get removed. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be completely open to daylight. So, you know, where the patio is now. The only enclosure would be the new bar in the corner. And where the big door is, or where the door is, will just be a smaller door. Yep. And yeah. that fence will match it's what's in the front. front and it's a shame I still like to see a picture of that because it's certainly a prominent. <laughs> that's going to be the view by everybody. First, first stream system. And actually, to just quickly touch on that, um, when we were going through this project with Rodney, you should have a letter in support from Strawberry Bank and Rodney. Um, in your from the public comment, um, he actually one of the things when we first walked through this project that he really liked was the fact that that entire screen and cover was going to be removed and give much more or much better visibility into the museum itself. Okay, he likes looking always through. Yes, he that was one thing that he really supported. The uh, customers like their mails looking through too. I believe they will. Are they? Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, several people have actually commented sitting back there um, that they would love to be able to actually see the gardens in Prescott Park and in the stone. And again, the stone orchard. Right? Yeah. 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 It would have been nice to have a picture. Understood. Yeah, so we can. I would just say, all in all, it's very nicely done. Uh, beautiful. I. I might not expose it as much and make it a little more uh, secretive, you know, by retaining that current fence. Um, anyway, I think, I think that it's uh, going to be a fantastic spot. It's going to be difficult to get in there. <laughs> I mean, reservations. Right. <laughs> access one. We'll have an open seat for you. <laughs> Motion to approve. Anybody <laughs> else with two comments? I just think it's really lovely. I get thirsty just looking at it. Certainly, <laughs> movement over that thing. Canvas. Yeah. 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 Very claustrophobic feeling. Yes. yes. It's, and it was a summer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially after good rain. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so is anybody in the public uh, would like to speak about this? <laughs> um, apparently, there isn't anybody, so I'll close the public hearing. Uh, it's just a point of order, and wasn't this a work session? Right. Yes. We have to do a little bit more dancing. Yeah, so I have to close the work session. So uh, could somebody make the motion to close the work session? So moved. Second. All right. Now we move into a public hearing. Yep. Um, aye. 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 Yeah. We need we need some sort of description again, don't we? Agree? I think as as presented. <laughs> My God. <laughs> this is the first time. I've never heard that before. The professionals love to drag things out. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so this doesn't this is the first time you've called me professional. <laughs> 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 Do you have a mo another motion to approve this? As presented. As presented, yes. I'll mm -hmm. make that motion to approve as presented. Okay. I'll second. Are you gonna I think on? it's um, maintaining the special character of the district, matching the fences, and I think it's still in uh, conservation and enhancement with property values. Simply. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Against? Do it, um, Nick, do we need something from the second? Yeah, what it, yeah, those were both from the first. Oh, okay. okay. That's what I was saying. Okay. Okay. 
It's going to be quite a, a bluestone patio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, work session new business. So we all have to go down to the tables here. <laughs> Requested by David A. Sinclair and Nicole J. Giusto, owner of the property located at 765 Middle Street. Wherein permission was requested to allow the new construction of a detached garage living space above as the plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on accessible map 148, it's lot 37, lies within general residence A and historic district. And who is here to present this? Good evening, uh, Jennifer Ramsey with Soma Studios and the owner of the property, Dave Sinclair. I haven't here. seen you in a while. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so this property, some of you may be familiar with because Dave and his wife have been doing improvements to it over the years they've lived there. Um, and what I have here is a pretty um, robust package because we have gone um, for variances already with the Board of Adjustments. We've done pre tap work. We're here, we'll do TAC work, we'll get a final approval on this with you folks and also do planning. Um, so this package represents some of the approval approvals and the sheets that were presented to the Board of Adjustments. Um, this cover sheet here shows the, the parcel, it's a corner lot, so we are impacted by two front yards. Um, you'll notice what's not noted on here, there's a pretty strong um, dotted line straight down the middle of the lot. This was two lots at one point. And I'm just want Dave to talk a little bit about how this whole thing. Yeah, so this was uh, involuntary merge by the city. We've seen this a lot. And in that case, people could easily unmerge it. Um, however, this previous owner had a pool there in the back. So that prevents us from unmerging it since they um, treat it as their own. Um, so rather than try to subdivide it and let somebody build a duplex or a threeplex on it, we kind of thought that we'd like to keep, keep it for ourselves. And it's a three family property right now. And we kind of think we have the big enough yard to make a garage right. um, and get some cars off the parking off the, lot. Exactly, right. And off, and off the street, true, because there's always a lot of cars parked in the street, I've noticed anyway. So um, they have their own private residence here, the single family home. And then the building to the back of the lot is what we call the carriage house. And that is two tenants. Those are small units, mm -hmm. eight, I don't know, eight, yeah. eight, nine. Um, and so the goal of this application is to build a third structure, which will act as a garage um, to the back of the back corner of that lot. Uh, and then also create kind of a courtyard space by virtue of how we've fashioned the shape of the building. Um, so let's see, the next sheet that you have, which is C1 and Altus's plan, shows the existing two structures and it shows our new structure, which is a unique shape building, but it does allow us to accommodate parking for the three residential units that are there now. And this garage will have a residential unit above it. So it'll be a four. It'll be four units on this, um, four dwelling units on this property. So this garage allows us to have um, parking per the, what the city requires for everybody um, and get everyone off the street and have covered parking for many of those, um, of those units as well. Uh, we've also got some deck space, which you'd notice is dashed above. So the darkest line is the mass of the actual building itself. The dash line toward uh, Middle Street is a raised deck with a covered area below. A patio area. Um, and so the variances that we sought and uh, were received um, was, I'll just go through these kind of quickly. The, the most critical one is probably um, this, the setback to the rear yard in terms of what we're going to discuss today. But um, we got relief um, for, let's see, three dwelling buildings on a lot where two are permitted. So we now we had two buildings. We now have three buildings on this single lot, which is a double wide lot. Um, we got a relief for the square footage per dwelling unit. And then the third item was we received relief to use um, a 10 foot setback to what is considered the back property line um, where 20 is required. And the reason we did that, again, going back to trying to kind of craft this area that is a courtyard space for all of the residents of this area, is um, the, the current carriage house is 8.7 feet from that backyard. So 10 feet 
is more or less in alignment with that. And it also allows us to provide, um, to maintain light and views from the home that is noted as 148-36, the Middle Street condominium building. So that's the closest um, home to our, our lot and to our structure. And so by pulling the building back toward the back of the lot, we are able to maintain views. I think there's three windows and a kitchen bay window that we've allowed to be, um, to, to remain essentially unchanged in terms of what they see. That condominium building kind of sits at a canted angle. They don't look at us directly. They look more at Biddle Street as well. Um, so the next sheets go, these are just the grading utilities that we're going to continue pursuing with PATH that Altus developed, um, working with Woodburn and Company for the landscaping. Um, Robbie and Vicki have devised a very nice um, co like cobblestone, if you will, patterning to, the, to this area. Um, they've softened it with some trees, some new patios, the apron, um, but this has really started to create something that feels very comprehensive to the lot itself. And then we did, um, we have three renderings of the project from Tangram. These are from the three most prominent views looking into the large lot. Um, the first is from middle and you'll see the new garage in the background. Um, we're um, very eager to retain the qualities um, architecturally that exist on the main home with the garage. So same siding, colors, trim details. There's some lovely sweeps on this home, both at the base and at the roof. Those characters and qualities and details will be carried on back to the garage. Um, there's one quirky view, part of this view that I'll just mention. You're seeing something kind of in the foreground and it's actually, um, a, it's a playground. It's the kid's playground. It looks like it's a very similar colors and tones uh, to I the painted, left of the house. I painted it you painted it. <laughs> so it's kind of, it looks a little confusing in terms of what you're seeing here, but that, um, Structure in the foreground that is shorter is actually um, the playground. Okay. <laughs> they see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next view is going to be from that neighboring property. So you can see the angle of their home across the front yard toward Middle Street, and that our building sits back from that. Um, and right off, just beyond the porch, there's this little bump out, and that's where those kitchen bay windows exist. And then the final view is going to be what you would see from your other ship there. What view are we on? Lincoln. So we're the third rendering in. Yes, right there. Yeah. Up on. So here you're seeing the entrance. This, the, their actual driveway is off of Lincoln Ave. So you're seeing the view through back to the new garage. The carriage house is to your right as it exists. The existing home is to your left. Um, and again, you can see a lot of the details are being replicated back there. Our next sheets um, are the lower level, the parking level, which you can see we have um, parking for the residents above the, the garage on the second floor. We have two cars in the main section, which will probably be reserved for, for Dave and his family. And then there is a, a third bay that could be used as a single car bay to get a car in, um, but we are actually fashioning it to be a little bit more of a garden room because we are where the pool was then became a garden and now we're going to bring the garden to the front yard more near the playground so this will be a space for the family that they can use and entertain and have adjacencies to the new gardens um any questions i know i speak a little bit okay and then you'll see the next plan is the upper floor the living level this is going to it's about two thousand square foot residence um and then uh, to the to the left is a small office, which will be used by Dave's family. And, the, and that's the deck you're seeing there that isn't fully coverage, if you will, when you're looking at the civil site plan. And the elevation is a little tricky because of the angle. So we're always trying to show one view head on, and then you're going to see two other views that are going to be a bit of an angle, essentially. So the top view, the east elevation, is the view if it was directly onto uh, Lincoln's Ave. So you're seeing the residential entrance in the foreground. That's that set of stairs that goes up to a deck and they can go directly into their unit. They also have um, stairs up inside their parking area. So inside and outside access up inside. Um, the large doors in the middle, which these are, it's a single door for two cars and it is the smallest size we can get to work for that. So we're not looking, this isn't, you know, as elaborate as it looks, we're using very, um, Conservative sizes. What is the smallest size? It's me? like 14 feet. A 14. Yeah. Yep. And then you'll see head on beyond is that other set of doors, which we also call that garden room. So used as a car spot or for um, live at living space. Um, the upper floors were ma again matching all the window styles and types. Um, above the center garage doors, you'll see we're trying to replicate the look of what an old barn would have, like a hay area. 
And that also provides some privacy where the way the condo is arranged, it's, it's, it's looking toward the backyard and back the back corridor of all those homes as compared to looking straight into the single family residence in front. So we're trying to retain privacy for the, the residents as they all occupy that same space. Um, let's see the, I'm sorry, this is the east. That was the north. So the east elevation you'll see now, this is looking, this is facing middle, in fact, this view. So you're seeing those, what we have is French doors going into that garden room. Um, the oversized pair for two for two cars and then the residents, the single residents you're seeing is what is looking at, you're looking at head on there with their stairs going up. Um, the notes on the side are going to reference that we're going to match the shingles, um, that sweeping overhang eave detail, um, the mahogany that you'll see um, on, on the existing home, and we have some photographs in the back, is also going to be retained here. So it's really just a matter of matching all of those details. I will mention that an example of the, the, the eave sweep here, the one in the main house is quite grand. The one in the carriage house is slightly less. So we're going to be matching the carriage house sweep at the eave on this building. So we retain like the prominence of the main house a little bit more formally. When you want to put decorative swag pediments over the windows? We're not going to do the decorative swag. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can negotiate that. I don't know. Like one. <laughs> Dave, you could make it. Yeah, I was going to say, only if you can mold it. <laughs> I've done that, actually. I've done I know. Creation of the, the rotunda of the, of the historical society mm -hmm. that I do. Well, um, okay. on the team together here. <laughs> uh, uh, one thing jumped out at me. I, I, I just want to put it to bed in the renderings, the yeah. 3D model. Uh -huh. You had raptor tails. Yes. In the pencil drawings and elevations, you don't. We don't. We, we will be doing the raptor tails. <laughs> You've got it. I, I, I was it is that if that was another thing that was going to get rolled off. As yeah, no, I, <laughs> I apologize. It's much easier not to have. <laughs> <laughs> These are really unique rack tells too. So yeah, I think why be... I would bring it up is is that they were kept, they were retained on the carriage house mm -hmm. yes. as, as clearly a signature of the property. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. So while it's not a rule that, that everything on the property has to be dressed like that, well. And, and these are so unique. So, and that's, well, yes, I, and I, it's yes, they're wonderful. Yes, the little you can see the little sweeping. Yeah. Yes. Yep. What do you call them, Martin? Do you call them something else? <laughs> it's not coming to me. Okay. <laughs> but that's quite it's over here. Um, Something's coming. Here. Well, I get no. I, I don't want to start. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't finished yet, so I can keep yeah, going. Right. I'm almost done. Right. The, so sheet nine, oh, you're seeing the, the, the two, um, the back elevations, if you will. Uh, so south is going to be facing the condominium property, the neighbor, and then west faces um, the backyard, the true backyard as it runs down Lincoln. Um, and then, let's see here, there we have. And then this is a, this is just another elevation of the it's the same building. I'm just trying to show you a head-on view of those those double wide doors essentially. So this one is a lot of the same. The pictures in the back are probably most interesting because this shows close-ups of the what's happening at the main house and what we're going to be looking to replicate. So you'll see the sweep detail at the base. Um, we don't won't have amount, any amount of stone showing just because of we're at grade for parking, so we won't have that part. But we'll have the sweep where the shingles are. Um, here to Dave's point, we're going to match the trim casing and sill, but not the decorative header, unless we decide to change. You guys can get together on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, so here's here's the picture of the um, the even rafter tail detail as it is on the carriage house. So this is the lesser. It's just less of an overhang. Essentially, is the biggest change. But we felt this was more appropriate for the garage than trying to go step step it up. Um, there's aspects to the house like the gable dormers, which are kind of replicated here on the front. Um, and this is a great picture because it doesn't show the new garage beyond like the renderings do. So you can see kind of what is back there. It's just the backyards of all those homes on Lincoln. And then the, so this, so I have a, I have a new detail here, which I'm happy to show you. It's basically that you were, you've been spending time, um, rebuilding the widow's walk, which has, um, Go ahead. Go ahead. Do yeah, a lot longer than I thought. So the widow walks restored, and we're yeah, able to finally get a picture. Um, show the wood tone for the 
proposed garage floor. So that's mahogany with a specific stain on it that they were excited. It looked beautiful. Yeah, were, it's like yeah. boat stain, so I don't have to do it every year. Right. So anywhere where we have mahogany, which is the garage doors, the railings for the decks, the railing going up to the residential unit, that's going to be um, the presentation. And then I also included in this packet, um, we have these seven of our letters from the surrounding neighbors that were used during our variance approval, which was back in I think, September. What's the product on the mahogany? Is it sicken? Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. Is it a stain? Yes. Yeah. Oil stain. Oil. Wicked good eye. I'll tell you what, after a couple of years, it starts to gray out. Oh, yeah. But not every year. Hopefully. Not. Right. <laughs> yeah. As you can imagine, imagine it's probably 35 feet up and oh, very hard to get to. And yeah. probably nobody's touched it for 50 years. Yeah. Right. And we just did it. So, yeah. 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 Because we have lost a couple of those in town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. tumbled. The warehouse box? One tumbled down. Yeah. I think it would uh, off of uh, Mr. Rice's sister's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rice House fell off. It was, it was, it was a shame. It, no one had been up there for a long time. Yeah. Can I ask why you chose a stain rather than a carriage house? Um, because it was still there. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of railings that are already stained. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah. The yeah. Sarah looked at the kitchen. It's also mahogany, Not using the which does show up in uh, one of the renderings. You can right. see that. Yeah, and that's. That's the actual, it's not a rendering, it's the actual photograph. We yeah. are building the background. So, so we're looking for any other questions here? Uh, there's some some comment about the, the feature doors over the garage. Uh, they seem to run up into the, the, the companion, yeah. so to speak, yes. of that gable. Yeah. Uh, and and it, it looks a little large. Heavy. We're trying to, what we're trying to create there is, so and the interior is the kitchen. And rather than having kitchen windows that look right down into the courtyard and right into your home, we were trying to get some upper light in there while still giving some character to the that front space. Could that same thing be accomplished with a set of smaller doors? We could look, yes. Yeah, so, oh, absolutely, yes. And, and yeah. maybe a, a little a separate transom over that yeah. read like a window. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That has, um, I mean, any actual carriage house would not have giant doors up there. They'd be slightly smaller yeah. than the doors yeah. below. It's like a so scary to be able to open those doors yeah. up there. Yes. <laughs> Is that, Deb, you had said put the transoms maybe separate and above. Would that be, yeah. that I, would I, be, or was it, okay. I, I, I think that I like the way that it's, I like that, I like, I think it's appropriate to fill that. That mm -hmm. yeah. provides an excuse for why there's that little dormer roof. Right. But, but it, once that excuse is done, you look at it and it's just hard to rationalize mm -hmm. why those doors are there right there. so big. Sure, okay, yeah, no, that would be the... Are they operable? The windows, and this scheme, they're part of those doors. Oh, the doors, well... It's a faux like hay loft door? Yeah, we can put they're not hinges. <laughs> they're not if you open them, you'd be looking at the back of the kitchen cabinets. Oh, the windows awnings or something like that? They're the windows, as if they became these separate pieces, they could certainly be an awning style up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The kitchen and your wall cabinets are going to be underneath of it. Yes, exactly. Nice place to put a collection of colored glass. <laughs> In my house, we fill every Blue space. Glass, yeah. Every space. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Um, I was yeah. going to say, I'm, I'm glad that you provided the 3D rendering because <laughs> when you're looking at the plans for these things, right. it looks enormous. Right. Um, the footprint of this being larger than your house which is a substantial house mm -hmm. so it's it kind of threw me at first i was like oh god this is right an enormous but building it kind of wraps around itself um but the certainly the, the renderings help show the distance mm -hmm. that it's set back and so that it's not going to be so quite up in your face or look like it's overwhelming mm -hmm. hopefully it looked like it's overwhelming but, and either be in their original buildings um is the height how is the height similar uh compared to the house and the carriage it's house? lower than the than the main house it's closer in comparison to the carriage house i actually think it's slightly taller than the carriage house but it's not in excess of the main house okay um these yeah 
the big brackets that support the extended sockets mm -hmm. in some of your feature elements mm -hmm. on the, the roof. Yep. Um, are they going to be composite laminations of wood? Or I, the reason I say that, yeah. and you know, I, I sort of peered at the carriage house, mm -hmm. and there's a set of brackets supporting a bay window mm -hmm. on the Center Street. Yeah. Um, and they're, they were shingled, which I can't yeah, say is a common treatment. So the main house has the same brackets on the dormers on the second floor. And I took out the shingles and put in, uh, if you will, what's that really thin wood that bends easily? Luan. 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 Many layers of Luan because I could bend it. And um, so then those shingles are not showing because you're right, the sh shingles doesn't look good. I don't, we don't have any pictures of that here. But uh, I know what you're talking about. So it's not going to be shingled. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it just, yeah. I'm not saying it couldn't be. Mm -hmm. It's a style. It was. It's just okay. not my style. Right. I'm, I'm thinking it would match the trim. So yeah. that same color. Um, and then if it's composite or whatever, it's made out of the exact thing. Mm -hmm. All righty. So. Yeah. so oh, I'm yeah. sorry, Margaret. People would not be surprised if I said I was worried about the mass at first, but the site walk it is a very, very big backyard yes, is set back to think that um, the scale, making it simpler, slightly smaller and height is appropriate so that you get the three buildings mm -hmm. in relationship to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only thing that struck me and um, is the the rendering seemed to make the paved or cobblestone area very significant. It goes all the way to the edge of all the buildings mm -hmm. and puts a lot of hardscape back there. Um, I'm assuming you've talked to whoever about watershed and that sort of stuff and again technically, but um, I, I was a little disappointed to see how much you went from green to to Hardscape. Yeah. That's if that's if it's either technical to need it that way, or it's your preference, or it's the only way to get the cars to be able to turn around. Well, with a four unit, anything above two units, um, all cars have to be able to come in forward and go out forward. So we it does have to turn around the car steps so, so they the can't surface, back out. The surface or facilitate that turn yeah. activation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. On to that very point on uh, my walk through the site where I was met by the applicant and toured around. Um, we talked about uh, an alternative to asphalt for that hardened surface. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of it is in response to the fact that there's just a lot of it. And, and if there was a way to make it just a little bit friendlier, it would probably go a long way toward making the scene comfortable on its site. Um, he then quoted me a price for cobbles, and we are going to have to pass a hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dirt driveway works just fine. Mm -hmm. What are you using pavers, though? Aren't you using pavers? These are a paver um, that yeah, Robbie paver. puts back. It's, it's not asphalt. Yeah, and she's trying to change. I mean, she's just got the orientation, and she has the apron at the street front and the apron in front of the garage door. So That's she's trying cool. to change, right. So she's changing it up a bit. Yeah. I think it's just a different orientation. Um, but uh, to your to your point, Margo, I don't disagree. The angle of the perspective, and it's almost like you're someone's like kneeling down, makes it look more expansive than I think it will actually be. The way you see on the site plan, it really tightens up. Like we toggle in as much as we can between the buildings and then it widens again to the purpose of the back. Yeah, it does look so. like you're on your knees. So <laughs> it's a very short person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I just had a question. Look, these renderings are great from Tangram. Yeah. And I, I don't know what who lives here. Uh, can you see my mouse? It's seven thirty. But you know, it yeah. it seemed to me worth worth at least exploring. I, I don't know. You waved your hand, but I'll let you speak for yourself. Um, this is a really transparent second floor deck, mm -hmm. and it seems like it would have been worthwhile to look at at least the side panels maybe transitioning to something a little more private. Oh, yeah. So there's less, mm -hmm. you know, I don't imagine this is going to get a, a ton of use right. out here, right. but they usually do the first year mm -hmm. and then dwindles, <laughs> but um, people are living on the second floor, so they will use it. And it just seems like that's, that's a lot of activity up in the air mm -hmm. that most people don't expect to have 
suddenly appear beside their house. Mm -hmm. But I, I have a roof deck and, uh, and so do my neighbors. Now. So I have some experience with that. But anyway, I, I don't know if it came up in your conversations, but that's my two cents. It had, it had, but we certainly could. I mean, the, the nature of the kind of the skin of these buildings being yeah, a shingle, we could do a shingle to extend shingles. exactly. <laughs> it kind of extends out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, just as tall as the railing. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that, that one of the things is it looks like a building with some big shoulders, mm -hmm. and maybe it's a way to sort of alleviate some of that doing something with the roof. Mm -hmm. If you take more cues from the main house, mm -hmm. um, and also just the, the body, this, or is this a shingle style? Yes. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> what did we call it on the staff notes? It was like a uh, it, yeah. interpretive With of the style. swooping skirts, I'd say it's more of a queen in the mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, but there, there's areas where the surface sort of just comes out mm -hmm. in certain places mm -hmm. and, and it's beautifully done. And I'd probably like to see a little bit more of that in this edition. Okay. And I just feel like you, you need to, it's a whole lot of roof. Mm -hmm. And it just, it does make it look very massive with a whole, that whole big roof area. I was going to say the same. Windows. Hmm? A couple of eyebrow windows. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> That's so a great idea. You take your eye and break that up a little bit. But <laughs> the the, really um, easy to build too. Yeah, right. I do a lot of I think you're getting a from your back oh, no. front porch hmm. uh, in the main house. <laughs> Because I was going to say the same thing. I, I felt that porch was inappropriate for mm -hmm. um, the rest of the style complex um, the compound, right? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I I would get a little more playful with some of the features and uh, try to break up that big roof. Okay. All right. And and the and the door mm -hmm. and that second story door. I, it just to me, it seems like so like. There's supposed to be a deck out there that was never built, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, it looks doesn't look great. Okay. So in general, I uh, I would just say that uh, it, it to me it's the second floor uh, door. <laughs> it, it does it does it's too big. Mm -hmm. It's too wide. Yeah. Okay. Um, everything else uh, I find is fine. You know? Um, so I'm going to ask if anybody, this is a work session. Yes. So I'm going to ask whoever's here to speak. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to come up or? Yes, I would. Unless you can talk very loud. I, I yeah. am soft-spoken, so probably yeah. better if I just come up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave those angles on. Or do you want to have I don't really want to look at them. Okay. okay. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Yes, please introduce yourself. So my name is Nicole Bodo. I live at 733 Middle Street, which is the property in the middle photo rendering that you all were looking at. Yes, exactly. First of all, I'd like to clarify something about that house. Um, she mentioned that the bump out was a, a kitchen. Um, that is not a kitchen, that is a dining room. That's the dining room. And that is the main window, that is the main view out of the house. We're sorry, anybody else? Which, which house, the one that- My, 733 Middle Street, this here. the house on the side, yeah. Yeah. the duplex, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Triple windows? Exactly, yeah. yes. That is not a kitchen, that is a, that is a dining room. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> That house is a historic duplex. It was built in 1820. Um, so, you know, they're not modern condominiums by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, like 765 Middle Street is a historic property. Um, I understand that the Historic District Commission's role is limited to specific review criteria that's contained in the ordinance. And while I have many concerns um, that will be raised in front of the zoning board of adjustment, um, perhaps the planning board, I'll, I'll limit my discussion tonight to 
matters that are within the historic district commission's scope of review. So you are all aware of the HDC's purposes and objectives set out in the ordinance, which are generally to preserve the historic character of the district and to regulate new construction in order to preserve that character and the property values in the historic district. Uh, this proposal, however, and by the way, that photo rendering I saw for the very first time yesterday evening, I had asked my neighbor for the plans, that photo was not included. So this proposal um, flies in the face of most of the historic districts uh, commission's purposes and objectives that are stated ordinance. Uh, the surrounding properties are generally period appropriate single family homes, some with modern accessory structures like sheds. The proposal before you is to add now a third residential structure to this single property, creating more of a hotel than a single family home. The property already has a detached separate rental building with two units. This is not compatible with the character of the district. The setting, scale, and mass of the proposal are wholly inconsistent with this district. Uh, in a neighborhood of single family homes, this proposal places what is essentially a third dwelling unit in what is traditionally a backyard in the district. That dwelling unit happens to be right up against my home, visible from the street as an out of place eyesore that simply does not belong. This is evident from the rendering submitted. It doesn't take an expert to appreciate the historic value of this neighborhood. Um, the neighborhood is generally comprised of single family homes that face the street with a porch, some with appropriately sized detached garages that are plainly of a scale and mass appropriate for housing automobiles. This so-called garage before you in the proposal looks nothing like the garages in the district because it is of such great size that it dwarfs any sensible image of a garage. It's not a garage, it is essentially a third home for the garage underneath that would be used as a rental property. Finally, one of the main themes of the Historic District Commission's scope of review is to preserve the historic value of surrounding properties. The proposal before you does not preserve or respect the historic value of the district. It profits from the district by being an overdeveloped rental housing development in such a culturally valuable and unique district that is truly one of a kind. I do appreciate the HDC hearing my concerns as pertaining um, to the very, very easily understood design criteria of the district. And I trust that you can see this proposal is simply outside of the scale, mass, and the guidelines in general. Have any questions for this question? My name is Nicole Bodo. Nicole, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm sorry, I have a question. Is your house a duplex also? Yes, yes. You, you don't have to. I'm very glad that you asked that question. So this house that's right here that you see behind you. Which is there. Which is there, yes. 733 Middle Street. That is part of a historic duplex. So it was built as a duplex. What I live in is actually what used to be the mother-in-law suite. Um, it was built as a duplex in 1820. Um, it is essentially still original. 
Um, so yes, I, I live in a duplex. Is uh, 736, is that the other half? 729. So 729 is on the other side. You can't see it. 733 is, so it's a side entrance. It's my entrance is from the side of the house. So my primary view from my home is into the direction of where this um, structure will be. Did you have any other questions? Um, no, thank you. Um, yeah. Where is this in the approval process? Is, is, I'll ask that. Yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you. Well, I don't know that I can fully answer that, but you should be able to because it's your project. Did, did, you, the, did you get the BOA approval? Yes, we did in September. So, Nicole, were you were you not notified of that? It no, I was not. Noticed I was not thought. notified of that. So, sorry, can you? I forgot what you said. What month did Se you? September. Okay, September. Right. So if you want to contact the planning department tomorrow, call me tomorrow, and I'll 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 better answer that question. Nicholas Cracknell. Yeah, I will. Um, seven three two eight. I think extension six one zero seven three two eight. Okay, actually, um, so um, as you may have guessed, I'm an attorney. I work the law firm Divine Element. This is not my area of practice, um, but my partner is a real estate attorney. And um, so he made me one call. His name is Chris, Chris uh, Swinarski. He's an attorney. He is an yep. attorney. Yep. He's a real estate attorney. All right. Thank you. It hasn't gone to the planning board yet, right? No. No. Uh, yeah. Just the board adjustments and pre tax. Yep. So, um, is it a site plan approval? That right? Yeah. Because of the fourth unit. That's why we're going. Yeah. yeah. I think I think you know, how much I know. Yeah. So so I'm sorry. I don't understand what has been approved exactly. So what this project? Let's first say what it needed, and then yes. the status. Yes. So it needed no specific order. Site plan <laughs> approval from the planning board, which because there's four units being proposed. It requires site plan approval from the planning board. The planning board has a group called the Technical Review Committee in front of it, which I'm on with staff. And we we review a project. We also have a public hearing. We submit a non-binding recommendation to the planning board for their public hearing to make the ultimate decision. Okay, so that's a two-step planning board process, TAC, then planning board. So that's permit number one. Permit two, for lack of a better place to start, here, it needs HDC approval. And then thirdly, because it was in the rear yard setback and, and some other multiple principal structures on the lot, going from two to three, not units, but principal structures, it needed a variance for that as well as the rear yard setback and maybe something else. They all would have been bundled in one application. And what the applicant is suggesting tonight, I have no reason to not believe it. I just don't know because I don't work with BOA directly. The BOA approved that apparently in September. So we'll confirm that tomorrow. Everyone should have been notified the same as this hearing, same as this work session. Just so you know it, because this will be important. Yes. We're only obligated to notify the abutters for the first work session, no subsequent work sessions. So it's incumbent on you to, or any of your neighbors, to hear tonight what the motion is. And we have to, we have to uh, either continue this or close out the work session tonight. And if we continue it, it's to a date certain, meaning a month at least, not necessarily a number of uh, the day of the month. Because we have two meetings a month. Do you mm -hmm. with me still? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there'll be no subsequent notice. That's okay. She's, this isn't her, her. Uh, this is not my expertise. area. This yeah. time I buy and sell businesses. I don't there deal with real estate. So <laughs> when this goes, when this finishes with work sessions, it will yes. go to a public hearing. There'll be a second notice that will come to all the abutters before we can hold a public hearing. So that so you'll be will noticed be... at least one more time by this commission before yeah. they take action on this application. This is all non-binding, preliminary. This discussion, work yes. sessions are all informal. Yes, and they're not held to anything they say, and nor is the applicant. We're just having a conversation. Once that process finishes up, 
They then apply for a public hearing. The whole idea of a work session is to get feedback and likely tweak your, your design. It's rare you do work sessions that change nothing. Usually there's some changes. Sometimes there's a lot. Sometimes things take years. Um, but when they're done, the work sessions, this will close. Then they will go and work on their public hearing application, submit that, and then they'll be in the notes. Sorry if that's wordy. But... Oh, I'm used to wordy. Yeah, right. Since you're teaching, I find something interesting with the uh, winter compliant budget that, that's been going on for months and months, is that why we- Which one is that? The 90? The huge one on, on that we were custom house lighting. The uh, lighting. lighting on Pleasant no, Street? No, 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 oh. last, last week. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the huge project. Oh, one rains, one rains. Right. Yes, so that's not winter old if you said that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, My that's mistake. Carlos. Yeah. That's a mistake. That one does have, uh, Planning approval, zoning, yes. plan. Yeah, we're as last. Well as, There's so, but in this case, because it's newer, it it feels like it's flipped. no. They, an applicant, an applicant cannot come to this board for a public hearing until they've got any zoning relief from the board of adjustment they need. That's the only requirement we have. We can have work sessions and not as not ad nauseum because they're non binding, but we can't. Well, we should not be hosting and we'd have to waive our rules of procedure if we held a public hearing for a project that we know needs zoning relief, usually variances is what that means. But you can go to the planning board last, you can go to them first. Most people go to the zoning board first because it's the, the highest bar to get over, uh, especially if you need variances, but there's no general order of operations. Nick, is there a record of... Um... The notifications that they sent yeah, out. Yeah, we're going to have so, a record of who was so notified. So there should be a record of whether or not you were yes. notified. Yeah, right. there should be. And it's a certified, I believe it's certified yeah, mail. Certified it is mail. not certified mail. No. You didn't get that for this? No. Okay, then scratch that. It's not certified. Yeah. What's the, <laughs> did did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I wish it I wish it had been, because um, I, I, I right. certainly would have attended all of the hearings. Um, and a lot meetings. of the stuff you're talking about is you know, concerning the Board of Adjustment. It's what we are essentially the style. And well, is, but this yeah, is, there. there is a style. Concern. I mean, this is the view from the street. And the yeah. view from the street is of this uh, new build structure with a, with a deck um, next to a house that was built in 1820. So to me, that that is, you know, well, and to, a historic you know, feel issue. And just to clear the air on that, the, unless I'm wrong, which I've been wrong a few times already tonight, um, the B, the BOA was looking not at scale, mass, and volume. To your point, right. they're looking at setback and the number of structures on the lot. That's all they looked at. Right. And as we discussed at the end of last meeting, even if another board is looking at scale, mass height and volume, it does not usurp your ability to do the same. You're obligated to look at your own rules, procedure, your own design guidelines, and make a decision. Uh, otherwise, everyone would go there first. They're not design people. They'd be making decisions and tying your hands. That's not the way it works. Yeah. All right. So, motion to continue. Yeah, uh, yeah, to January. To January. We'd probably be coming okay. for schedule. So then we well, if if you're not coming in January, January, we will do February. Yeah, okay. And, okay. and that's a maybe. It would definitely be February. That we but is that to. maybe a public hearing? Uh, we'd like a public hearing. Oh, well, then you're done with the- We're done with the work session. That's your request. So no, they're requesting okay. that the work sessions so you close, close, close and there will be no continuance. So you'll get a new notice when they submit. Okay. Is there a way to look up the notices on the website or to keep no, track of the, any of the hearings that are going on? Or, okay. All right. I will. So, Thank you. Motion to adjourn and say Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Second. Are we going to talk about voting? Hmm? What, what we already talked about it last week. week. Can you I'll write my number down yeah. if you give me it? You really yes. want to talk about it? Um, I thought we were going to, in January, we'll just Okay, now, uh, the one thing that I did notice upon looking back, um, looking back is uh, 
that our voting is seven members. So unfortunately. Oh. <laughs> no, they, the alternates do vote. No, they don't. I don't think they do. I'm voting. I, I look back. I have the minutes. I'll confirm it with Lee. Confirm it. Yeah. Because I feel like I voted really on it. It's my number. Oh. Uh, January the plan is released. Yeah. All right. We'll move on with our business. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. okay. So let's all have a good hop. Yes, yes. Your, uh, your ruler. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> oh. Want one of those? Did you do it during? Did that all just happen? No, all just happened. We didn't quite vote. Well, you were writing down. Yeah, that's something. We all said I. Okay, I'll stop recording. <laughs>